come to town and we're at RFK Stadium, which is sold out for the 130th consecutive time. The Eastern Division of the NFC, Washington with the best record in pro football, 13 and 2. The Giants, their opponents, 3, 11 and 1, a most disappointing year. Ideal weather conditions, however, temperature 43 degrees, northwest wind 9 miles an hour. Forecast is sunny and cool. It couldn't be better. What a majestic, beautiful sight. Our nation's capital with the Washington Monument in the background. And this great city has been worked to a football fever and frenzy by this Redskin team. They do love them here. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. The Redskins are 15 and a half point favorites. Everybody thinks they'll overwhelm the Giants. Everybody that is but their coach Joe Gibbs. With me is John Madden and John and I spent a long time with Coach Gibbs yesterday afternoon. He says this is the third most important game he has ever coached. Do you really believe it? I believe that he believes it because he said you know this is for everything. He said we have to win today to win the division and that will give us the home field throughout the playoffs. And it'll also give us a bye next week. We have a lot of players injured. He said we really need that. He said now he believes it. He said he's been preaching it to his team. He just hopes they believe it. That's the important thing. Speaking of believing, Bill Parcells of the Giants really believes they have a chance. We talked to him yesterday, and he told us how he thought he'd have to do it. Well, he thinks that they can do it with defense. They've always played the Redskins tough on defense. But he said the secret is the first series. He said what you have to do is play very strong, solid defense the first time the Redskins have the ball. He said because if you do that and if you stop them, then they start to get a little nervous and they don't have that confidence. He said, but if you let them come out and they start moving on you the first time they have the ball, he said it can be a long, long day. Bill Parcells over on the sideline in front of the giant bench and what a tough year it's been for him in more ways than football ways. The last 31 games, the best records in pro football. The best one is owned by the Redskins, 28 and 3, then Miami, then Dallas, then the Raiders, and then Pittsburgh. But 28 and 3 is phenomenal. Ali Haji Sheik, Pro Bowl bound after a great rookie year, will kick off for the Giants. Deep is Reggie Evans for the Redskins. with some room gets out to the 25 26 perhaps before the Giants led by John Tuggle take him down here are the lineups the offensive unit of the Redskins Theismann Riggins Wick Walker Rick Walker the H back Hard Monk and Charlie Brown the wide receivers and the tight end back after missing last week's Dallas game with an injury is Don Warren Jacoby Grimm Bostic the whole left side of the Redskin offensive line in Pro Bowl bound Mark May and George Stark, the other two, and they've had good years also. Art Monk comes in motion and swings back the other direction. Here's Riggins. Riggins for about a yard, and that giant defense led by Courier and a host of others in blue. Here is the giant defense. The Hardison and Leonard Marshall. The defensive ends and Jerome Sally the nose. The four good linebackers, Van Pelt, Kelly, Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. And in the secondary, Haynes and Jackson on the corners, Courier and Kennard deep. Riggins got maybe two, make it second and eight. Rick Walker, number 88, the move man. Here comes Monk in motion again. Now he hits back in the other direction. The same play again to Riggins. Penalty marker is down. Riggins got enough for the first down. Brian Kelly made the stop, but the Redskins are going to be penalized. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see an official wear glasses, huh? It admitted it. Holding against Washington. I used to always think that. You know, for years, you would never see an official wear glasses. And you think, you know, a lot of other people wear glasses around that age. You know, they're all middle-aged guys, and... They don't wear the glasses, and you wonder why. Referee is Gordon McCarter. Number 88, the offense. Repeat, second down. Rick Walker, the culprit. Here he is. Here he is, right here. We'll see him now. He makes contact with Van Pelt there. He's okay. <clears throat> What's that right arm come around the left arm? What's the left? He got the left arm on the left arm. Then he gets a right arm takedown. That was a, a good hold and a takedown. Not too much doubt about that one. That was a good one. That's about as good as you can get. That was 
holding with both hands. Nick Giaquinto is the lone setback, and now he comes out of the backfield as Heisman looks upfield. Pass deflected, almost caught by Charlie Brown. Haynes got a hand on it. Charlie Brown is shaken up just a little bit. Now he's getting back to his feet. They can't lose him. He was almost caught by uh, Mark Haynes there, too. That's the type of thing that Parcells was talking about. He says, you know, we have to come out here. In this first series, you have to do it. Here's the isolation. Here's Charlie Brown on Mark Haynes. You see how Haynes is looking? He's looking back. He's watching the quarterback. He sees the ball thrown now. He starts to react up. Charlie's going for it. Mark Haynes is going for it. Neither of them get it. That ball was deflected before it ever got there. It's third down now on 18, the kind of situation that Bill Parcells was hoping they could put the Redskins in. Mark McGrath in the game. Pass is picked off. Terry Jackson makes the diving interception, and the Giants take over in Redskin territory. A rare occurrence for Theismann to throw an interception. He had plenty of time. Well, of course, he was throwing the ball to Mark McGrath, who they just activated yesterday. They lost both their, or two of their backup wide receivers and Garrett and C, and so he's watching out here now. He hasn't worked a lot with McGrath. I don't know. We'll see right in here at the end. Here comes Jackson. The ball is just thrown a little to the outside and a little over McGrath. So the Giants will take over at the Redskin 37. Butch Wolfolk is the lone setback. Zeke Moat is the man in motion. Set the offensive unit in just a minute. This is Rutledge looking deep. Missler incomplete. Good catch by Missler, but he was out of bounds. Here's the giant offense. Jeff Rutledge, the quarterback. Butch Wolfolk will be the lone setback most of the time. Moat, the move man. Ernest Gray, Byron Williams, the wide receivers. And the tight end is Malcolm Scott. Offensive line, Bensonard, Hughes, Turner, and Totolo. In place of Gordon King. Second and ten from the Redskin 37. Byron Williams in motion. Draw play to Wolfram. A yard, perhaps. Rich Millot has had a great year on the tackle. The Redskin defense. And did they ever overpower Dallas last week? The line, led by Dave Butts and Daryl Grant in the middle. Rarely do you get them out of there. The linebackers, Kaufman Okowitz, Rich Millot. The secondary, all new from the last year. Green, Washington, Coffey, and Williams. From the shotgun, Jeff Rutledge. Redskins don't blitz much, but they look like they're coming in. And they are. Quickly to Ernest Gray. Maybe enough for a first down. Very close. Rutledge has been throwing more quickly to make that protection a little bit easier. Coffey and Williams knocked him out of bounds. Let's see it right here. We're going to see a blitz coming from the right-hand side here, but as you said, Rutledge just gets that ball in the shotgun. One, two, three, whap, throws it out there to Gray, and they get the first down. That's one thing. With a blitz or with not great protection, your other alternative is to get rid of the ball more quickly. Which is what he's been doing. Butch Wolfolk is the lone runner behind Rutledge. He gives on a counter play to Wolfolk. He shakes one tackle, cuts back inside, nothing doing. Maybe a yard to the Redskin 26. Vernon Dean led the defense. Rich Mulat is 57. Second down from the 26 for the Giants as Ernest Gray comes out wide left along with Byron Williams. In the backfield. They say no gain. That's Moat in motion. He stays the block. Does pick up. Over the middle. Scott. Down to the red skin 10. About the 10 and a half. Greg Williams on the stop, but a 15-yard gain on the completion from Rutledge to the tight end Scott. I'll tell you, the Giants are looking pretty good here. See, it's a little play fake. Tight end coming across. You see him right there, Scott? He comes underneath those linebackers. You see the play fake holds him. He gets in there behind the front of the secondary. And boom, he picks up a first down. That's a pretty good move. Malcolm Scott is now playing the tight end. And Mo Mowat, the move man. 
This is Missler this time in motion. Hand off to Wolfhook. Chased by Butts. Cuts back inside the 10 to about the 8 before Mel Kaufman cut him down. The Redskins the best in the NFL against the run. And that's why I think we're going to see a lot of first down passing. You, know, you can't take, you see those big guys in there? Look at Butts and Grant and those guys. You can't. But you can fake them, hold them in there, try and get rid of the ball quickly, and get those little possession-type passes. Second and seven. Ernest Gray swings in motion behind Rutledge. Rutledge drops the throw quickly outside to Gray. Knocked down by Daryl Green at about the two. That ball very nearly picked off by number 55, Mel Kaufman. He just didn't quite get his hands up in time. See that, though? The Giants are giving him a lot of mixture. They're giving a little run, some pass. That time, Gray came in motion, kept going, and he was a pass receiver. Not a bad little deal they got going here. That was a quick look at Ali Haji Sheik. He wants to kick an extra point here. That's about it all it would be. Missler and Gray on the left side. Gray goes in motion. And now he cuts up field. Rutledge looking for Gray and complete. And they'll have to settle for the Sheik. Daryl Green, a good defensive play. I'll tell you, that Daryl Green is an amazing player. He was the Redskins' number one draft choice this year. Came in there, and he's become a starter on this team. And I'll tell you, he is really a heck of a corner. They think he's going to be a star. Watch him here. Here's Gray coming in motion. Now he's going to start up the field, then back out here. Come on out here. Now here's Green on him. You see, he's right there. He got that little burst of speed. Covers him like a glove, we used to say. From 20 yards out, with Scott Bruner holding, Ali Hachi hits his 31st field goal of the year. He's 31 out of 37. For him, 20 yards is easy. So the Giants break on top. 1983 Pro, Pro Bowlers, four from the Giants, seven from the Redskins. Taylor, Ali Haji Sheik, Harry Carson, Mark Haynes of the Giants, Heisman, Jacoby, Russ Grimm, Jeff Bostick, Mark Murphy, Charlie Brown, and Dave Butts. All of them deserve it. Sheik to Reggie Evans. At the eight. Giants down quickly. Oh, almost beheaded. Mike Dennis came roaring through the Redskin wedge and almost decapitated Evans. You wonder how in the heck he could get through there. Look at all these blockers. He comes right through, right between two of them, and he goes right for the juggler on that one. Ooh, ooh. I'll tell you, that's a tough thing. You know, as we said earlier, the Redskins have lost both of their returners, Mike Nelms and Virgil C. Fired up giant team. Walker, the move man. Heisman gives to Riggins, and Riggins is wrapped up by Jerome Sally. Just about at the line of scrimmage. Let's see how they did it against Grimm and Bostic. Well, here they are. We see down here now. The one thing with John Riggins, you know, Jerome Sally, he can play right down the line of scrimmage. See, the Redskins don't have Joe Washington today, so they can play very tough from tackle to tackle because they know that's where John Riggins runs. They got a good outside jam from Lawrence Taylor to go along with that good play by Sally. He's been back to throw. But he attacked. Throw. Pass picked off by Jackson. Bounced off the hands of Walker, and the Giants get another break. And Kelly deflected it, and Jackson got the jump ball. Not a bad start for uh, Jackson today, huh? I'll say. Two That's... possessions of the Redskins, two interceptions by Terry Jackson. Watch you hear from the end zone. I think number 55, Brian Kelly, may have tipped something, he too. Did. He did. I don't know how he gets over there, though. It starts right there. No, it was Harry Carson. It was 53. Right. See, it was Carson who tipped it. And then Jackson came in and got it. That was Harry Carson. And the Giants have it first and 10 at the Redskin 27. And Rutledge goes to throw on first down. Going for Gray. Deflected by Byron Williams. And what a good play. Daryl Green back there to help out as well. I'll tell you, that Daryl Green is something. When you can get a rookie 
You know, and he's only 5'8", 170 pounds. He's not a big guy. But watch, can he move? I mean, he's right there with Byron Williams. He's watching the ball. He knows he can't touch him. He doesn't want to interfere down there. The ball's up. The guy's only 5'8", but he jumped about 6'10 on that one. Reminds me of Summerall in 63. <laughs> he had quit playing by then. 53. More like it. Butch Wolfolk with nowhere to go. Not bad. Stopped by Neil Okowitz. Bill Parcells. Redskins have already turned the ball over twice today. Now that's something that they did not do on a regular basis during the year. Look at what they have done throughout this year. That's up to the minute. That's to write down. But they were plus 43 coming in, and that's amazing. That's 20 more than the best record in the NFL that's ever been, 49. Their Super Bowl year. From the shotgun. Redskins on a blitz again. Rutledge has a man open. It's Byron Williams. Fumble. Redskins have it. Greg Williams comes up with the football. And the Redskins escape. But we were just talking about turnovers, and that's what got the Redskins here. That's why they have the best record in pro football. Watch this now. This didn't have anything to do with coverage. Good protection. Good pass by Rutledge. Good catch right there. No one around him. And then he fumbled the ball before he was hit. He started to put it away, and it slipped right down his body and hit his knee. Boom, out. Contact at Summerall and John Madden. RFK Stadium in Washington. 3 nothing Giants sold out for the 130th consecutive time. Heisman to Riggins. Riggins over the right side for about two. Brian Kelly and Brad Van Pelt stack it up. The one thing we're going to see a lot, or the Giants are going to see a lot, that's the important thing of John Riggins today, because more and more this year, the Redskins have been using Joe Washington to run more for Riggins, and of course he's out today, so they're going to use Nick Giaquinto, who will be the backup running back. I don't think he'll run much. I think he'll be used primarily as a pass receiver. Riggins will do most of the running. And that brings on another switch for the Redskins with Clint Didier taking the place that Giaquinto used to play. That's Charlie Brown in motion and Theismann drops to throw. Under pressure, Theismann almost got out of it. Sacked back at the 10 by Lawrence Taylor. I'll tell you, when Lawrence Taylor gets a beat on you, you don't get away. I mean, some that, you know, Theismann, a quarterback can get away from these other guys. Let's watch Lawrence Taylor here. Now, he's going against Joe Jacoby, 66. Holy man, is that guy strong? You see that, Taylor? He took him, put his hands on his shoulder, pushed him to the offside, took the inside, and got Joe Theismann. Got That's him down with one hand. One hand, but he took but he took Jacoby with one hand, too. Who weighs over 300 pounds. Holy moly. Third down, Charlie Brown in motion. Theismann back to throw again with pressure. And down he goes again with Lawrence Taylor wrapped around him. think Lawrence Taylor is a great player. A play before he has a pro bowler, Joe Jacoby, blocking him. Now watch on this one, the left guard, Russ Graham, 68, is going to block him. See him here? He comes out. He's a pro bowler, too. Watch him get his hands, push, push Graham right to the ground and get Theismann. Now there's a great player. You know, we use that word great too much, but this guy is one. Absolutely. Jeff Hayes standing back into the end zone will kick. Good high kick. Pete Shaw feels it at the Redskin 45. Gets one nudge block, and that's an illegal one. Humble. Giants got it back. Flowers on the recovery. But the block by Andy Hedden on Pete Cronin is what caused the flags to be thrown. Is it one of those illegal blocks from behind? <clears throat> above above the, waist? the waist? Yes, it is. Yep, you're right. Let's see if we can see it. It's from the left of the picture, right there. See, it is right there. He gets him from behind, above the waist, puts his hands up. That means I didn't do it, but you already did it. He could read the name on the back of the jersey and tell his number. And if you yep. can do that, you don't block. Isn't that and right? You got him square. That's the old rule. 
Now there's a conversation. Joe Theismann's telling him, look, he went there, I Illegal went there, I had this guy. He's the coming here. By the receiving team. We'll cross First him, coach. This is all that stuff we have to do. Why don't we just play him? Joe's a good listener. Joe, 5.52 remaining in the first quarter. Giants leading the Redskins 3-0. Those Redskin offensive linemen, mainly Jacoby and Grimm, talking it over on the sideline and trying to figure out who is that guy wearing number 56. I think they know who the guy is. They're trying to figure out how they're going to block him the next time. Rutley has batted away at the last second intended for Ernest Gray, and again it was Daryl Green. We better stay away from that guy. I think so in the in the Again, defense has probably figured out by now that in first down, the Giants are going to pass. Here's Gray. We'll see Green come into the picture. See, he makes a cut, sees the ball. I'll tell you, he can make up more space quicker than most guys. He that's, really can. that's the secret. You know, guys can run fast, but being able to make up space very quickly, you have to have that to be a corner. Track play to Wolf Hook that was not sprung at all. Dexter Manley stunting him effectively right up the middle to stop Butch Wolfel. Here's the stunt. We'll see Manley he starts to the outside. Now the Redskins do a lot of this where the end takes the inside, the tackle takes the outside. That time Daryl Grant worked to the outside, Manley work, worked to the inside, and he ran right into the trap play. So it's third and long. Tuggle and Wolf Hook in the backfield as the Giants operate from their shotgun. Redskins putting on the pressure. Rutledge putting on the pressure. Passes picked off. Vernon Dean has the interception for the Redskins. Still on his feet is Vernon Green. Finally taken out of bounds. And the Redskins get out of another jam. 13-yard return with the interception. Headed for Ernest Gray. There's Vernon Dean. He was a starter last year. He was beaten out this year by Anthony Washington. And he comes in and plays as the fifth defensive back in their nickel package. Watch him. He's the outside guy out there. He's the corner. He's up there. He's playing a zone. He started to play short, and he just kept running deep. That's an interesting thing. He was a short guy. Daryl Green was a deep guy. But instead of pulling off short, he just kept running, and he went deeper than the deep guy. So it's two turnovers apiece now. Giants with the two interceptions. Washington interceptions, only nine, counting those two by Theismann today, followed by ten. That is by Atlanta. Giants have 31. You can see a very significant difference. Here's Theismann back to throw again to play a time. Picked off again. Bill Courier picks off Theismann. And the Giants have it now at the Redskin 33. Art Monk made the stop, but Theismann having so far a dreadful day. A dreadful day. You know what happened? He was he was thinking it was a man-to-man -man and it was a zone. He doesn't see it. Now he has a slant over here to our left, his right. Now watch, he's looking in here. Now he's he's watching his receiver. He doesn't see Courier. See, Courier's just back there in the zone. You see, he was he was throwing in there to the receiver, to Art Monk, and Courier was in that zone. Oh, just picked it off. He watched his receiver instead of the defense. Let's see if the Giants continue to throw on first down. That's Missler in motion. They run the counter play to Wolfram. Maybe they should have thrown as he gets back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Todd Liebenstein made the stop. Well, it's a little frustrating for the Giants because if they throw, they get intercepted, and if they run, they don't get anything. But they do have the turnovers, three interceptions, do it by defense. Of course, one thing they can do is get in position here and let Ali Haji Sheik kick a field goal. That's not bad offense. They have not scored a touchdown in the last two games. Split wide to the left. And now Rutledge said something's wrong. And the Giants will take a timeout. Joe Theismann only had eight interceptions through the entire rest of the season. Okay, now watch what happened in the interception. Here's who Joe Theismann's watching. He's going to run a post in here. 
Now, he really is in front of this corner. Now, he doesn't see the safety. The safety just drops back in the zone, and he's the guy that intercepts a courier. Now, watch the pattern here. We'll see Monk come from the outside. You see, now, he's going to run a, a post or a slant here in the outside. Now, Courier just backs up. He's not playing man, so he just backs up right in there. Theismann doesn't see him. He's looking at the deep defender. Theismann over on the sideline. Joe Morris is in the game for the Giants as the running back now. That's Moat in motion. Rutledge back to throw. Ernest Gray to about the 28-yard line. Anthony Washington on the Washington coverage. Not enough for a first down, a pickup of about five. I think if I were going to pass like that, I would probably start looking over here on my left, the Giants' left, the Redskin right, because they've tried over there against Daryl Green, and they haven't come up with much over there except some interceptions. And now, of course, with the third down, the Redskins are in that five defensive backs again. Which includes number 32, Vernon Dean, who came up with the interception before. Gray in motion. Now he comes back in the other direction. Rutledge batted away. Intended for Byron Williams. Anthony Washington on the coverage. And it's time for Ali Haji Sheik. Giants lead 3-0 on a 20-yard field goal by number six. Now he'll try another one with Scott Bruner holding. One out of 37, two from 56 yards out. Two of his misses came from 66 and 61 yards. This one is 44 yards away. Brenner says, are you ready? Gets it down, the sheep rockets it. But no good. Plenty of distance. But wide left. The score still. The Giants three. You'll see it here on CBS as the Redskins go right to work. It's Regan behind Russ Grimm. Stopped by Harry Carson. Let's get back into the little, little bit more. Mark May was also out in front of Regan's. Tomorrow, it'll begin with the NFL today. The Rams at New Orleans. Philadelphia, St. Louis. Green Bay, Chicago. Those are all early. And Detroit at Tampa Bay later on in the afternoon. John Riggins comes out. He got a yard. Make it second and nine. Redskins with the ball. Two and a half minutes left first quarter. Their own 28. Nick Giquinto in the backfield. Didier in motion. He's been back to throw. This time he has time. And he has Giquinto, who does not have a first down. Bill Currier there quickly. Brian Kelly there with the assist. Third down, Redskins, looks like about four. I tell you, that giant defense is fired up today. They, uh, you know, you think the last game of the season, they're really out of it. They'd had a, you know, a tough year, a long year. A lot of bad things happen, injuries, losses, and so on. And, you know, they come into the last game, and they, ah, they aren't going to be too interested in playing. But I tell you, these guys are really going after them. They're going now with a four-man rush up front. Casey Merrill comes in. So does George Martin. Has a completed pass, but a penalty marker is down. Art Monk caught it. Terry Kennard over on the coverage, but a flag is down. It's going to be holding against the Redskins. Right, that one flag came real deep, too, and that's usually something on the tight end. We have a couple of flags, one on the line of scrimmage, and one was thrown from that deep guy, and that's usually someone holding the tight end on defense. So I bet we get one of these deals where it's on both teams. When that deep guy, see that field judge right. FJ? When he throws one of those launch deals, it's a... Uh, Illegal formation, offense. Yeah. That's a line there of scrimmage There's no eligible one. receiver on the left side of the line. Illegal use of the hands, number 36, defense. The penalty's offset. Repeat the down. That's the one the field judge caught, that one. That, right. Uh, legal use of hands in the defense. Referees like penalties like that. It gives them a lot of airtime. Yeah, a lot of airtime. And you see the problem. You, you know, Joe Jacoby was eligible on that play, and you can't do that because 
you have a big tackle like him, 66, you have to have a receiver outside him. When you don't on the line of scrimmage, then that's a bad formation. We have a minute and a half left in the first quarter. You saw that total offensive yard. It's 10 for the Redskins. That's fake a blitz, and Heisman goes back. To the outside, George Monk, and this time everything looks okay. No flags down. First down, Redskins. Terry Kennard, luck knocked him out of bounds. Now, Terry Kennard is a, is a free safety, but here he's playing out here on Art Monk. He's really not used to man-to-man -man coverage. Monk just drives him deep, gets him up, and then makes that out cut. Watch the pass protection here on the left side. Now, watch big Joe Jacoby out there. And like, you see, those guys can use their hands now. So they just get those big arms. They just keep pushing those pass rushers to the outside. Love it. Jacoby is so big. Even if he couldn't use his hands, he'd be tough to run around. Walker in motion. Heisman fakes to Riggins. Out to Monk. Courier. Excellent play by Bill Courier. Monk had a blocker out there. It was Walker. Courier just played right through him. So you did. Now watch Walker. Here's 88. You see him coming out. The screen is going to be here to Monk. Now watch Walker. He'll come up on Courier. Ball's in the air. He catches it. Now he can block. He blocks him. Courier goes down with it, takes on the block, right off, makes the tackle. Pretty good defense. Yes, sir. Or bad block. Make it second and seven from the 44. 56 seconds left to play in the first quarter at RFK Stadium. Walker again moves. So does Warren. So they have two tight ends. Monk now comes in motion. Riggins, the ball carrier. Loss. They had him for a loss. He broke one tackle. That by Brad Van Pelt and lunge for maybe a yard. That'll bring up third. This Redskin crowd, which is usually one of the more vocal ones in the NFL, has been reasonably quiet with reason today. Well, when you have one of the highest scoring teams in NFL history and you played a quarter and you're down three to nothing, there's not a heck of a lot to get excited about. They're closing in on the all-time NFL scoring record. Well, they were. Brown. Wide left. Now he started in motion. Here's Theismann back to throw under pressure again. Theismann from behind by George Martin. Gets away from one. But we'll have a look at Jeff Hayes. And down goes the penalty flag. Lawrence Taylor's going to be called for a late hit. And is he unhappy about it? Say he tried not to. He was trying to hold back. He was trying to hold back, but Joe Theismann looked to him like he was still going, and he tried to get in there and stop him. And they're going to call him for unnecessary roughness. They're going to give him a 15-yard penalty here. They had him stop. They had him in a punting situation. Taylor is really upset. Very emotional player, anyway. You know that's that's the tough one. It really is because. You, know, you have to get on the guy. You have to make the tackle. But if he's down, you can't hit him. And sometimes you make your commitment. Now watch it here. Here we'll see Theismann. He's backing up here. He's going to get a rush from the right. See right there. Here it comes. So he starts to scramble. He comes up the middle. There's a missed tackle right there by Martin and Marshall. A whole bunch of them. Look at him. They have him. He thinks he's down. Now there's the penalty right there. I don't, I don't agree with that. Boy, I don't either. And that's, nah, he didn't do anything. That is tough. That's tough. And Coach Bill Parcells agreed. Play in the penalty call against Lawrence Taylor. Well, they should have had him up there. There shouldn't have been anything, but he really he really misses him. Watch what Theismann does. Theismann goes like he's hit. Taylor says, no, I didn't touch him. Oh. Marcel's really upset about it. He got an audience with the referee, Gordon McCarter, but it does no good. Theismann says he wants to be an actor. He just began his career. He gets to Riggins. Riggins gets maybe two. Harry Carson. Bill Courier. On the stop for the Giants, Riggins got two to the outside. Riggins has carried six times now and picked up eight yards. So that giant defense has done its job. Redskins have the ball at the giant 39 now. Second down and eight. 14 and a half minutes before the half. 
Three nothing Giants over the Redskins. Monk and Brown both split wide to the right. Walker in motion. They give again to Riggins. This time he gets to the outside. A good straight on tackle by Terry Jackson. Stuck that head right in there. I'll tell you, he did. He had uh, Mark May, the big right guard, pulling out in front of him, and uh, uh, Mark May didn't block anyone. Let's see if we can watch it. Watch your right guard here. There's Mark May, 73. Now he's out there. He's looking. He's looking. Riggins is waiting, waiting, and Mark May just runs right by Terry Jackson. Hey man, you get out there. You got to block him. See? He just put his left hand out there. Bill Parcells. You asked Bill Parcells yesterday how he planned to stop that play, that counter play. He said we got to string it out, and that's what they've been doing. Heisman under pressure again gets out of it. Chased by Lawrence Taylor. Stays in bounds. Knocked out of bounds by Pete Shaw. But Heisman gets a first down down to the giant 16-yard line. 17-yard pickup. I'll tell you, there aren't many quarterbacks that will get out there to that sideline and keep running. They usually try and get out of bounds, but not Joe Theismann. I'll tell you, Joe Jacoby does a pretty good job here. Watch 66 on Lawrence Taylor there. Look, he has him. He's so big you can't even see Taylor anymore. Look, he has him just enough. Theismann gets by enough. Most quarterbacks go out of bounds right there. Nope, he just kept going. Watch Joe Jacoby here. He said, he got by me the first time. He isn't going to get by me anymore. We'll square right in front of him. Skins first down at the Giants 17. Heisman fakes to Riggins. Will throw if he has time. Does throw. Charlie Brown touchdown. Here comes the fun bunch. celebration in the end zone. I don't know why. Well, you know, there's two of them that aren't playing today, and uh, Virgil C. and Alvin Garrett, they're both out of the game. Maybe they figure if the whole group is here, we won't do it. Mosley with the extra point. It's 7 I think. Or 7 3, I'm sorry. This is that bootleg play. Remember where the, the guard and tackle pull one way, the other guard pulls the other way? That's how it starts. Here's Charlie Brown. It's his first catch of the day, but it's a touchdown. Mark Haynes was man to man on it. Good throw by Theismann. But no celebration. Charlie Brown having a great play. You know, here's something. Here's this guard and tackle pull this way. Guard, tackle, pull this way. This guard comes outside. Grim, he comes outside. It's a fake. Theismann gets in behind him. Now watch the effect here. Now watch the right guard and tackle pull to the left. Left guard pulls to the right. Now stop it right here. Watch the effect of the defense. All the Giants are in there. Now here comes Theismann. Boom, touchdown. You have to love the effect of that. Right guard and right tackle pull left. Left guard pull right. They all cross in the middle. Hold the whole defense. Lawrence around the corner had some room. Good return out to the 30. Otis Wansley on the tackle. Morris trots off. Single season scoring record has just been established by Washington. It's 517. Houston quarterback by George Blanda in 1961 had the old record. San Diego next and Oakland in 1967 when John Madden was at the helm. 468. And one of your quarterbacks was George Blanda. Right. George Blanda was instrumental in two of those records. First down, Giants. Rutledge back to throw. Has some time. Does throw. Has Malcolm Scott wide open down the middle, and he gets in to Redskin territory. 24 yards of first down for Scott. A connection from Rutledge. Let's watch it from the end zone here. It'll be to the, the left of the screen here. Rutledge is going back. Pretty good pass protection. They're handling those two tackles in there. We see it's a zone defense. And he's just right in there in the middle. Just hit that tight end in the middle. I'll tell you, J.T. Turner's doing a pretty good job here on Bucks. 
See that? He got him right there. Boom! Right on the line. Not much penetration. Here's Morris trying to get around to the outside, but that's Rich Mullock who hits him behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, this outfit is tough to run against. You know, and that makes everything else tough. It's there's something about running that gives an offensive team confidence. Conversely, if you can't run, you lose your confidence. I think that's what the Redskins did last week to the Cowboys. They couldn't run, and they lost their confidence. The Giants are having equally a frustrating time. Seven rushes, four yards so far. Rutland. Again has time for a while, gets it out. Intended for Morris. Wouldn't have had much. Rich Mullot again was right with it. Good coverage by the Redskins. This will look familiar here, this stunt. Now watch. The end goes to the inside, and Butts comes to the outside. Dave Butts comes to the outside. That was the one that they got the Cowboys on all week last week, where the end comes inside and the tackle goes outside. We used to call that a palm. Some people call it an ET, end tackle stunt. It was effective last week, and you just saw it be effective again. Rutledge. That's Floyd Eddings. That was a third down play, and they did not get the first. This is, going, this is going to be interesting here. They still have five yards to go. Well, they're going to send in their, their punt team, but you know, you wonder, you know, the last game of the season, uh, you're really out of everything. Uh, maybe you go for some things that you wouldn't normally. This is Dave Jennings. Nick Giaquinto is back deep. Normally that would be Mike Nelms, but he's on the injured reserve list and can't come back unless the Redskins make it to the Super Bowl. Fair count by Giaquinto at the 10 yard line. The Redskins will start deep in their own territory. No return after a 32 yard kick. The NCAA basketball coming up right after NFL football. Louisville against NC State. Always strong teams. From their own 10 yard line, make it the 11 yard line. First down, Redskins. Didier went in motion. Heisman goes to throw. Hits Didier on first down. He fumbled. Redskins last half possession as Didier lost the handle. The ball bounced out of bounds and then bounced back in. The Giants recovered it. But the Redskins keep the football. Let's watch it here again. You know, Theismann started out, he had three interceptions, and since then he's been five for five. So he has a groove here now. He hits Didier. The ball just slips right down his leg. If it doesn't go out, oh, it did go out of bounds, but it was back back in. That's a good call. And almost a good play by one of the Giants. I think it was Mark Haynes who tried to bat it back in bounds. And Brad Van Pelt fell off. Harry Carson wraps him up immediately. I'll tell you, big Leonard Marshall came flying in there from somewhere, too. You know, he has that big body. He can match these uh, these hogs there on on uh, defense, big Leonard. You see, he can go up there. He can put his 300 against their 300. And maybe more. Well, this guy here can't. He doesn't win. But the other guy, Marshall, he can come oh, yeah. flying in there. I mean, he and Jacoby. Man, that's, that's, that's hog on hog. That might tilt the stadium. <laughs> it's third down Redskins. They need about eight for a first down. Operating from their own 12-yard line. Heisman backpedal. Sacked from the other side by George Martin. That's the fourth time the Giants have gotten to Theisman. He beat George Stark. Of course, George Martin has always been the sack leader in this giant team. Stark is right there on the right side of the screen. He's not there yet. He's going to come in later. We'll see him. He's coming right around here. You see him. Thighs was thrown. That was good coverage downfield. He didn't have anyone open. He had to hold the ball a little longer than he wanted to, and that let George Martin get to him. Jeff Hayes standing back in the end zone. Giants trying to set up the return. 
Hayes a line drive kick, and Pete Shaw should have some time to move with this one. Get around to the outside. Shaw to the Redskin 40, maybe inside before Peter Cronin tripped him up. 46 yard punt by Hayes, but a 12 yard return makes it a 34 yard. Joe Gibbs, over the last couple of years, perhaps the outstanding coach in professional football. His record speaks for itself. Butch Wolfe is the lone setback. First and 10 Giants, the Redskin 39. They'll throw on first down. Byron Williams at the 23. Giant first down after a 16-yard pickup. I think that's the thing they have to do. You know, they tried earlier on Daryl Green, and now they're coming over here, and they're starting to work on Anthony Washington. I think there's a little more there. Watch Byron Williams there. There's Anthony Washington. He had him by a step or so on that inside cut. Pretty good pass protection here. Watch Brad Benson, 60 there. He's going man-to-man -man on Manley. Just gets square on him. Really get a little grunting deal there. Keeps him off the quarterback. Giants out quickly. Scott was the man in motion. It's his wolf hook over the left side for maybe two yards. Darrell Grant, who is almost immovable in there. Talk about immovable. Did you see Scott run into Dave Butts? <laughs> he thought it was like someone who runs into a wall and doesn't see the wall. Watch Scott here. He'll come in motion. He's going to block Butts. Now watch Butts. He sees him come. Look at him. He just <laughs> crumples his legs. Scott looks up to him. Oh, oh, what did I run into here? Looks like he might have hit part of the stadium. Talk about a used helmet. See that helmet yeah, on Butts? a lot of dents and scratches. There he some buttons. Rutledge has to take a timeout again as the Redskins show him something he didn't expect on defense. They only have one left now. Look at that helmet. It's looks like it's somebody has been dragging it behind a car. Washington 7, the Giants 3, 8-23 remaining first half. And the Giants at the Redskin 22-yard line, second and nine. Wolfhook again, the lone setback. That is Byron Williams in motion. Redskins not a blitzing team. Here comes Manley. Rutledge just does get rid of it. It is ruled a forward pass and not a fumble. I'll tell you the one thing, Manley gets there, but the thing that caused Manley to get there was good coverage downfield. Watch Manley. He's working out there. See, now they're keeping their tight end, Zeke Mowat, in to help. So they had the tight end and tackle blocking on Manley. They still didn't get the job done. But Rutledge had to hold the ball a little longer than he wanted to because the Redskins had good coverage. Huggle and Wolfel. The two backs as Rutledge looks over the defense from the shotgun position. Rutledge scrambles to the outside, throws, and overthrows. Incomplete. Intended for Tuggle. Milot was back there with him. And Ali Haji Sheik will try again. He's hit once from 20, missed once from 44. Why do you think he wears gloves? Does that have any does that help the kicker kick or what? Those golf gloves there? I wish I could answer all these questions about kickers, but I can't. Well, you know one thing, they're all a different breed. I mean, they're not the same as the other guys on the team. They're good guys, but they are a little different. Well, just think about Ali Haji Sheik from Texas. Hey, look, he has one white shoe, one black shoe. It's good. Perfect. From 39 yards by Ali Haji Sheik. He's now two out of three on the day. And closing in, there are the feet of Ali Haji Sheik. And there are those gloves we were talking about. One white shoe, one black shoe. But he's not unusual. Yes, she is. And kicks off. I'm still not sure who the return man was. Brian Carpenter is the Redskin who fielded it. And so Washington will take over, leading by one now. There's Dave Butts checking his footwear. Well, I'll tell you, now there's, you talk about a foot. You know, his, his, he has 12 and a half. Is it feet? 
but they're 7E width. <laughs> you know, like E is big. You know, I mean, if you got a big foot, you're, you're saying, what do you got, E? He has seven E's wide. Look at that. No wonder he's hard to knock down. That's a foundation, man. Those Smurfs could move in there. It's like a tree. Like an apartment. Seven E. Seven E's wide, yeah. Here's Riggins looking for some place to go and he can't find it as Bryant Kelly was there. Iron Hunt also helped out. I'll tell you one thing that Joe Gibbs was saying is he wants to keep a tight end on Lawrence Taylor. Watch him here. He has Don Warren. I tell you now, they just got Warren back this week, and he's a pretty good blocker. But Joe Gibbs says we never want to let Lawrence Taylor play against air. Always want to have someone on him. It's second and nine as Riggins still only got a yard, and Theismann goes back to throw with time. Wide open this time is Don Warren. That will accomplish the objective of first down. Mark Haynes made the stop. Don Warren says, hey, thank you. I've been blocking all day. Thanks for a pass. You know, he's been out. He's been their real tight end. He's their blocking guy, Don Warren is, and the other guys, Clint Didier and Rick Walker, they're more the move type guys. And they've missed his blocking. I was mistaken when I said it was enough for a first down. It's about a foot short. So they mark it at that position. I would figure that here you could almost certainly look for number 44. Wonsley was in motion. And they faked the 44. Theismann goes back to throw. And misses Clint Didier who was his tight end. Didier had that long touchdown pass last week against Dallas, but the Giants that time didn't bite, and Terry Jackson was right back there with Didier. Well, you know what they try and do is you try and see the effect of the fake. When they go in motion here, now they're going to bring Riggins in. You hope to hold this whole defense and then get your tight end down deep. But now ju just watch the effect here. You see the motion guy goes out. Everyone's watching Riggins. See, they want to hold him in there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. But the only thing is, it didn't get the secondary, and they had uh, the tight end double team. That's the punt by Hayes, fielded by Pete Shaw. He's trying to get something going in the other direction. Shaw around the corner. He's got some room. Knocked out of bounds by Giaquinto. But he gets back to the Redskin 45. And the Giants will take over there first and 10. No flag on the play. A 41-yard punt. A 15-yard return, a 26-yard return for a 15-yard net. In the Sun Bowl, in El Paso, SMU 10 and 1 against Alabama 7 and 4, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And then in the Peach Bowl, North Carolina against Florida State at 3 Eastern Time. Giants out of the huddle quickly, and don't forget the Cotton Bowl, of course, with Texas against once beaten Georgia, undefeated Texas. Redskins against the Giants here at RFK, and again, Rutledge will throw on first down if he has time, and does. Byron Williams stays on his feet. Cut down at the Redskin 31-yard line by Darrell Green. Good effort by Rutledge. Byron Williams really coming to his own as a receiver. I'll tell you, the Redskins on that play had, uh, had their five defensive backs in there, too. In fact, Byron Williams is on Vernon Dean, or Vernon Dean is on Byron Williams. You see, he gets right by him there. You see Dean coming in. They're playing on first down now. The Redskins are with their nickel defensive back. Wisely so, because the Giants have been throwing on just about every first down. See if Rutledge does it again. Hands off to Wolfel. This time he gets some room to the outside and cuts down to the 26. Flag is thrown. Williams, the tackler, but a penalty marker is down. Uh, against the Giants is indicated by Dexter Manley, but he's not wearing a striped shirt. Butch Wolfolk had a tender ankle coming into the game, and it looks like he might have aggra aggravated it. He sure did. He tried to stand up, and he couldn't, and it's that left ankle. Joe Morris has already come into the game replacing Butch. Yeah, he's hopping off now, staying off the left ankle. There he goes. But that's an interesting thing that the Redskins are doing, playing first down with five defensive backs and getting out of their 
0-4-3-4. Something happened to Gordon McCarter's microphone. It was John Totolo, number 65, who was called for holding. They move the ball back to the 40, where it'll still be first down. But it's first and 19. Redskins 7, Giants 6. 5-24 left to play in the first half. throw. Redskins stunt. Got Eddings. Floyd Eddings down inside the Redskins 10. Darrell Green was with him, but Eddings gets it all back on a 33-yard completion. I'll tell you, that's something I didn't think, I don't think they expected him to go, to go deep. They had a short guy out here and a deep guy out here. And he goes to the deep guy, Eddings, again. Now, he's man-to-man -man that time on Darrell Green, or Darrell Green was man-to-man -man on him. He made a heck of a move, a corner move. Brought him in and back out to the corner. It's first and goal as you look at the book on Rutledge. The Giants at the Redskins, seven. Joe Morris, the lone setback. And Morris gets the carry. Morris barrels down to about the one. Greg Williams on the stop. They've had a lot of shots at this Redskin defense. They've been busy. Yeah, well, you know, you get down here, and everything shortens up on you, and you and you can't throw as much. Joe Gibbs there, he was worried yesterday. He really was. He said, you know, I'm really worried about this game. We can blow our whole season tomorrow. And, you know, everyone thought, well, you know, the Giants only won three games right. all year. How can you be worried? But he was right. That was not a phony worry. He, no. was, he was worried. And he'll get nothing. Maybe a yard. Dave Butts led the defense that stacked him up there. That'll make it third down. That old Daryl Grant was right in there, oh, too. Yeah. Those big guys, that big Dave Butts and Daryl Grant in there, I'll tell you, it's tough to run in that middle. Those guys line up. Look, 77 and 65, they line up side by side. You can't get anything. Watch him. There's Grant, 77. So he got his helmet in there, and Butts has his helmet in there, and there's no room between the helmets. I think they have to go <clears throat> some kind of play fake here. Play pass, bootleg option type deal. Rutledge wants Byron Williams on the other side of the field. Here is the rollout. There's the touchdown and incomplete. Giants are saying he had a touchdown. The Redskins are saying no. And it looks like the officials agree with the Redskins. Oh, that's a tough call in the end zone. All they have to do is have control in the end zone, but the feet have to be down. I bet the feet were probably in the air. He jumped. Remember that control rule? The guy has to come down with the ball and both feet on the ground. Rutledge is saying that should have been a touchdown. Good. I'd like to see some emotion at quarterback. Hey, come on, Jeff. Good. Look at it. There's Byron Williams now. It looks like he jumps up for the ball a little here. But your ball starts a good pass. He jumps up. Now, when he comes down, you see the ball, the ball popped out. He didn't have it when his feet hit. Although, I don't know about that now. He may have been juggling it, and we couldn't see it. Maybe never had possession. In any case... Haji Sheik puts the Giants back in front from 19 yards out. That's his 33rd field goal of the year. The rule is you have to have control of the ball in the end zone, but you have to hit the ground, and you have to have control when your feet hit the ground. Now, or a shoulder. Now, the first thing that's going to hit is his back here, but the ball was out before he hit. No, that was the right call. That was right. He never had possession. No. no. The Giants, nevertheless, recapture the lead. 9-7 with 3.21 left to play in the first half at RFK Stadium. A lot of playoff poss possibilities still alive. Detroit pretty much controls their own destiny. If they beat Tampa Bay, they'll be in the playoffs. But Green Bay is still alive. Both of them with 8-7 and seven records, but if they wind up in a tie, the nod goes to the Lions. They'll know what their destiny is and what they have to do because they play Chicago early and Detroit plays Tampa Bay late. Ali Aji Sheik. Reggie 
Evans back deep to the Redskins. He drives it in the direction of Brian Carpenter, but it's Evans this time. And he has stopped at about the 25-yard line. A little pushing and shoving going on in the background. The official gets in the middle of it. Whoever thought the Giants were coming to finish the season early was mistaken. Joe Gibbs wasn't making that mistake. Well, you were saying that it was a legitimate worry. You know, sometimes coaches have been known to make up phony type worries, but Joe Gibbs had a legitimate worry yesterday. And the big thing he said is, I hope the players know it. I hope they believe it. To Riggins. And Riggins gets his biggest gain of the day. About seven yards. Stopped by Harry Carson. That had to be some kind of a misdirection. I think, you know, he got right in there behind that big Joe Jacoby and Russ Grimm. You know, and they just fire out. Watch it here. It's going to be on the left side now. He just goes right in there. Boom, boom. Watch Jacoby come up there. He just obliterates the guy. He can't even see the defender guy. I think it was Harry Carson. It was. Him when he blocks him. Here's Riggins again. Now he's running like Riggins. And that's the Redskin first down. Brad Van Pelt on the bottom of the pile, but it's the Redskin running effort of the afternoon by Reagan. You know, the other interesting thing now, Pat, Ken Huff is in there at left guard, and Russ Grimm, I think, is the center. You know, Jeff Bostick has been having a problem with his uh, foot, his heel. And uh, so now they have to move Russ Grimm. Huh? Yeah, yeah. See, Russ Grimm is the center. The left guard would then be Ken Huff. Jacoby's the left tackle. Grimm is 68. Huff is 61. Jacoby 66. They don't lose much with Huff being in there. That was a big thing. They got Huff for nothing from the Baltimore Colts this year. And Joe Gibbs says that's been another one of their big acquisitions. They have 26 free agents on this. Isn't that team. amazing. And there's one of them right there, that Joe Jacoby. How can a guy be that big and that good and not be drafted? That's how the Redskins were built. Draft picks. First through the fourth round, there are eight members of the team. Fifth through ninth round, eight members. Tenth and higher, three. By trade, they acquired four free agents, as John Madden just said, 26 of them. The amazing thing is with all the sophisticated scouting systems and the computers, that a guy, as you say, like Jacoby would be available. Now, well, the other even thing. when they got him, they put him on, on defense. And he said, wait a minute, after three days, I don't play defense. And Joe Gibbs wanted to cut him. So yeah. if you don't play defense, I don't need any more offensive guys. Walker goes in motion. Now, he and Warren swap sides. Heisman takes to Riggins. Here's that play again. Heisman fires to Monk. Mm. Monk is taken down by Bill Currier. Down go the yard line holders. Down goes an official. All kind of people falling on the sideline. A hat, a couple hats yeah. went down. Yeah. He had the first down at one time, and then he was knocked back, and they're going to measure to see if he did get it indeed. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Giants leading 9-7. That's that old play again where the left side pulls right, right side pulls left, Theismann fakes right and bootlegs out left. All that action, and then they throw the ball to Monk. It is a first down for the Redskins. So Let's watch that play again where the guards and tackles cross, but this time watch the effect that it has on the linebackers here. They see this, 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 and they start all, and it gets them all caught up in here. Watch that, Troy. Watch it. You see, the, here come the guards across the whole thing. Stop it right here. Now look at what it does. It catches this linebacker there. That's Taylor. All the other guys are in here. Now Theismann comes out here all by himself. You see, and he can get to the outside. Now he's trying to find Art Monk. Finds him right there in the sideline. Gives him the ball. Well, first down. Watch the effect it had on Lawrence Taylor. He says, oh, there they go that way. Nope, they come this way. Oh, the guard's outside of me. There goes the quarterback. Yep, too late. Tell you what, you keep drawing like that, you're going to have, you're going to be competition for Leroy Neiman. Yeah, uh, my third grade teacher still says, I knew that guy could never draw. <laughs> 
Two minutes left, first half. Heisman has Didier spin around, and now he fakes to Riggins and looks to the left. Now he's going back to the right. Now he throws. Incomplete. It was Don Warren who was arguing that he made the catch. Byron Hunt was the nearest giant, number 57. Heisman having the move. Giants have put good pressure on him throughout the first half. They have Joe Theismann came out to his left and big Leonard Marshall jumped up in his face and he couldn't throw. So he just stopped and returned and went out to the right. Four sacks by the Giants in the first half. Yet Quinto is in the game. Mark McGrath is split wide to the right. Theismann under pressure again trying to throw a screen pass. Nailed. Clint Didier is polished by Lawrence Taylor. I'll tell you, they tried that influence again. <clears throat> they were going to move or roll out to the right and then throw back to the other side. See, well, Lawrence Taylor doesn't go for it. Now, what's happening, you see, he's watching him. Now, once he knows that he's going to the outside, he's covering here. He sees this tight end coming. He says, I won't go for that one. <laughs> And he arrived about the same time that Didier, the ball, and the whole package. That'll make it third and 12. Redskins from their own 46. Heisman has two setbacks at the moment. Penalty marker down. Heisman being chased. Marshall looking right at him along with Casey Merrill, but they let up. George Stark, I think, started to retreat before the ball was snapped. And that's who Marshall ran Fourth right by. Number 74 offense. I think Stark just stopped when the whistle blew. There's an interesting story. You know, all these young offensive linemen, the Hawks and so on, and this Redskin team. The one old guy there is George Stark, 11 years. He's played 11 years from Columbia. Now, they say that Russ Grimm says he's 25 years old and has a 35-year-old body. He says, but Stark makes up because he's 35 and he has a 25-year-old body. Nick Chief Giaquinto. In the backfield, Theismann retreats again. George Martin chasing, and now Theismann is going to take off. Now he stops, throws, incomplete. Charlie Brown couldn't find the handle. Theismann fired a bullet. Carson and Lawrence Taylor, the two nearest giant defenders. Look, Jeff Bostic is limping on the field. See, he can't play center, but he has to go in <clears throat> to snap on the punts. He couldn't even run on the field, Pat. He's just had a limp out there in the field. I bet he just snaps it, because you need that snap. He probably won't even cover this punt. Joe Gibbs said yesterday this team could use a rest. He thinks that they've just about blown all the tires. Comes running out of the back, and now he kicks it. Good effort by Jeff Hay. Flag is down, however. The ball goes out of bounds at the giant 11 yard line, but a penalty marker is down. Good effort by Jeff Hay. Yeah, but that can't be rough in the kicker because once the kicker starts to run, he loses his protection. It can't be rough in the kicker. The illegal yeah. man downfield. Hayes had a run. Two outsides get the guys can go. I know you see that you see you can't rough the kicker, but once he starts to run with the ball, he loses that protection. Then you can hit him. Look at the snap from Bostic. Bostic's a little shaky in there. See now Jeff Hayes feels that coming. Dennis right there, so he starts to run. Now he loses a pr his protection. No more roughing the kicker. See, so when he gets hit there, that's okay. Fine. Repeat fourth down. So they have to re-kick. 44 seconds left to play in the first half with the Giants leading the Redskins 9 to 7. If you just joined us, that's correct. The Giants lead the Redskins 9 to 7. This time, Bostic gets off the good step. Hayes to the sideline. It bounces back in giant favor. And they down it. There is Bostic, and he is in obvious pain. I'll tell you the one thing, you know, you have to get that center in there, that snap on the punt. Make sure you get the good snap. 
but there's no way that he can cover. Watch him here. He's 53. He's looking. Who hit me now? He's trying to run, and that's why he's just not playing today. Boy, I'll tell you, that's that's doing what you have to, I guess. <laughs> so the Giants take over at their own 33 and a half yard line with 35 seconds left to play in the first half. Three field goals by Ali Haji Sheik have put them in the lead. Joe Morris, the running back. Wolfhook is out. Not going to sit on it. Eddings hangs on. Hit by Darrell Green. 19 yards and another giant first down. Rutledge throwing well. And the Giants are taking a timeout here. You know, they're going for another one. I think when you've only won three games, it's the last game of the season. You have to do this. There's no time. There's no way. There's no reason to play conservative. These guys are the champions. You're not. Go on after. Go after them now at the end of the half. Go after them the whole game. I think Bill Parcells has done a heck of a job of getting that to his team. You know, we got one last one. Doggone it, guys. Let's go out and get it. Let's do what we have to. Coming up at the half today, the NFL today with Brent. A conversation with Bum Phillips. And Jim Balvano and Denny Crum. Balvano, of course, coach at NC State. And Denny Crum at Louisville. Situation here is Giants out of timeouts. 26 seconds left to play in the first half. Giants nine. Redskins seven. Redskins have two timeouts remaining. Ali Haji Sheik who has kicked three already warming up on the sideline. What a year he's had. There's a hog Santa Claus. Santa Claus has turned hog. I wonder what kind of gifts they give. Hog big skins. Very good. From the red skin 47. That's out of timeout. Rutledge down the middle. Is caught. Now they got to get that field goal team in there in a hurry if they can. I think they're going to get up in the line of scrimmage, try and throw the ball out of bounds to stop the clock. That's what they'll do. Clock is running now. With Ten seconds left to play in the first half. Rutledge quickly. Penalty marker down. They didn't get it done. They weren't set. And that could just about have taken them out of his range, although he has got a strong leg. They say it's against the Redskins. That'll give him a little more range. Yes. Put him a little closer to it. Here he comes. He is for a rookie and for a kicker. A very calm person. He really is, and his confidence has just been growing. Number 78, defense, first down, five. It's been growing each week. You know, he has that uh, right shoe, that black shoe. That's smaller. It's about two sizes small. Kangaroo, and, and, and what he does is he soaks it so it'll shrink it, and it'll just be like a glove on his foot instead of a shoe. <laughs> that makes sense to you. From 45 yards out. Sheik. Good. It is Giants 12. Redskins 7. Set and the Giants lead 12 to 7. Their defense and their kicker have done a whale of a job. We're at the half. The Redskins as Jeff Hayes kicks off. Joe Morris takes it at the three. Heads up the sideline. Morris hit just outside the 20. Gets up to about the 24. Stuart Anderson made the hit. Total offense in the first half. Giants 195. Washington 76. Pat Summerall, John Madden, 12-9, 12-7, Giants over the Redskins. Well, the Redskins are playing this half for everything, Pat. That's what Joe Gibbs, I know he told him at halftime. Men, our whole season comes down to this half. This is for the championship, the home field, the week off, the whole ball of whack. I wonder what they're thinking in Dallas right now. Probably hoping. Rutledge hands off to Wolfrick, and he has no place to go. He is limping, and limping badly. 
Dexter Manley out there with him. I don't know how long Wolfolk is going to hold up on that bad left ankle. Well, we can see here, we see the right side of the Redskin line, and there's Manley. See, he gets penetration. He gets in the backfield. He takes Benson on. Now there's no place for Wolfolk to go. That's the thing you have to do against the run on defense is get penetration. Get one of your guys into their backfield. Jeff Rutledge, the quarterback, second and ten. Butts in his face, but Byron Williams gets the reception outside the 30. Pickup of eight, Anthony Washington on the defense. I'll tell you, Jeff Rutledge impresses us today, I think. Or yes, impresses he does. Me, anyway. Yes, because... Uh, through all this, he's staying calm. You know, it has to be a big game for them. It's a big game for Jeff Rutledge and an opportunity to show what he can do against the best. And that guy, he looks pretty cool out there. He sure does. Bill Parcell said he wanted a longer look at him, and he's getting it. Third down conversions, they haven't been all that successful. Here's Wolfhook, and there's nothing there. And he gets it. Wolfhook. A last-second surge got very close to the first down. He slipped away from Dave Butts. I was just saying, you have to get penetration against the run, but then when you get the penetration, you have to tackle him. Because watch Dave Butts. He gets penetration here. Boom, the tackle tries to come down a block. He blows right by him. He has him in the backfield. Wolfolk slips right through. Good block on Kaufman. Now he picks up his off-guard and tackle, and he's able to get the first down. That's the first New York first down by rushing. They had seven throwing it. Rutledge had been throwing on first down. The Redskins do not have their fifth defensive back end, and Rutledge goes to work. Ernest Gray has it knocked away right at the last second by Ken Coffey. Butts hit Rutledge. Rutledge puts his fist up and says, oh, God, let's get this guy blocked. Watch him here. Here's J.T. Turner on Butts. You see, he gets that shoulder turn, turns him around, and he hits him right after he throws the ball. But let's just look, and is, is it complete? No, nah, it's not completed anyway. Okay. Butts led the Redskins in sacks going into this game. He had 11 and a half. Very nearly got another one. Four defensive backs again for the Redskins on second and 10. Rutledge retreats. Caught and dropped by Byron Williams. Incomplete. It's called incomplete. Anthony Washington was the defender. There was some question about whether Byron was going to be able to play today because of a pull groin. But he's had a good first half and very nearly came up with another first down catch. I'll tell you, and Jeff Rutledge is doing what he has to do. I mean, he's putting the ball in there. Uh, that one was just dropped by Byron Williams. It's been 10 quarters now, going on 11, since the Giants scored a touchdown. Third and 10. Now they have the five defensive backs in. Tuggle and Wolfel. Back by Rutledge as he'll operate from the spread. Redskins do not blitz. They get Byron Williams. Williams had the ball and dropped it, and now a flag is thrown. They're going to call pass interference, I'm sure. I think that may be on Vernon Dean, number 32 of the Redskins. It looks like he grabbed Byron Hunt just before the ball was thrown. I'm it, sure they got it. They did get him. Byron Williams cutting across the middle. And Vernon Dean guilty of grabbing. Gibbs guilty of dismay at the moment. If you can re re can you read lips? It was 32. Yeah. Referee guilty of having Mike that doesn't work all the time. But that's what it was. He did grab it before the ball got there. I saw him raw eyes without the thing here. <laughs> the thing being the monitor. Those raw eyes see a lot of things. <laughs> Joe Morris in there. There's the running back. Wolfhook is out. Rutledge gets to Morris. Morris away from Malak. Morris around the corner. About six. Anthony Washington chased him out of bounds. Joe Morris has good speed. Well, he broke all kind of records up at Syracuse, and there's a lot of records up there to be broken with all the great running backs they've had. Second down and four. Giants operating from their own 46. 
This is Missler split wide right at the bottom of your picture. This is Rutledge giving. Here's Morris barreling into Redskin territory down to the Redskin 40. Before Mill, Kaufman tripped him up, but they're going to be called for a holding. The Giants are. Morris had the first down and more. Let's see if that holding penalty is in here in the middle someplace. We'll see they start off in a double, come off here in the center, take butts by the play. I don't see any holding in there. I think I did, John, on J.T. Turner on butts. I think he grabbed him by the jersey as he started to get away from him. Oh. Repeat second 67. down. 67. That was a left guard, Billy Ard, then, on that one. Right. Got to get that microphone fixed. It's second down. Bill Parcells, he's just shaking his head. Yeah. He says, man, this has been that kind of year. Second and 14. Rutledge on a draw play to Morris. Morris can find no room as Dexter Manley. Had to be stunning to be inside like that again. Well, I think on that side, they had that stunt going on both sides where the ends and tackles crossed. Look at Manley. He has that, that shirt way up there. Now watch here. The tackles, they're the inside guys. They'll work to the outside. See him? And see the both ends come inside? And there's Manley right there. You're right. He just worked right in on the stunt. Morris ran right into him. It'll be third down and 13 now. Giants at their own 37. Morris the lone setback. Headings in motion. Rutledge back. has to be pass interference, no doubt about it. Ernest Gray, Anthony Washington grabbed him around the neck before the ball was even five yards away. I'll tell you, you know, the Redskins are really making mistakes that they haven't made all year. Totally it's uncharacteristic. It is. I mean, not only the turnovers, but the, the penalties on third down and all those type things. Watch this now. Here's uh, Anthony Washington, 24, on Ernest Gray. Playing a man to man. Now you can't touch him until the ball gets there. Watch. He just takes that arm and just puts it right around his neck. That's illegal, huh? Very. I think he knew it, too. He didn't argue that when he said, doggone it, I didn't mean to do it, but I did it. So it's a first down, Giants, at their own 45. As Williams in motion. Now he comes back this way. Rutledge to Morris. Morris scoops over the middle for about a three yard pickup. Greg Williams again on the tackle. Morris got about three. This, of course, is not artificial turf, and this field always seems to be damp, and footing here is usually pretty unsure. Morris is out, and Wolfhook is back in. There's a guy who's carried himself with class all year long. He sure had, and I'll tell you, he's had his share of problems. Moat stays in the block. Manley is coming from behind. Ernest Gray has a giant first down at the Redskin 35. A strike from Rutledge. 17 yard gain against Darrell Green. Let's watch him out there. He's out here in the left hand side. He's going to he's going to run it in. You see, he starts up there against Anthony Washington. He has he's given him too big a cushion. He starts in there, runs right down the line on the end. Beats him pretty good. That's not a bad move by Gray. See what he did is he pushed Washington off and then cut on the end. My apologies to Daryl Green. Here's Morris cutting up the middle and surging for about three. Neil Okowitz on the bottom of the pile. Ernest Gray has had a spectacular year. Broken the record for a number of catches in the season, which was held by Dell Schaffner. Byron Williams looks like he's developing as a good receiver. Well, he is, and you know, that's one of the things that the Giants have changed. They used to signal their plays in from the sidelines. Now they send them in with one of the wide receivers, and it's been Byron Williams, John Mistler, and Floyd Eddings today. There's the year that Ernest Gray has had. Now they go with three wide receivers. Rutledge going for Gray, and Gray can't quite light enough fire. Darrell Green was back there with him. We'll make it third down and about seven. Line of scrimmage, the Redskin 32. 
Zeke Moat comes in with the play this time. They'll go with one back. No. Nope. They'll go with the three wide receivers again. Yeah, the difference here on third down is they usually go some form of shotgun now, you know, to get the quarterback, Rutledge, more away from the line of scrimmage. Moat stays on the right wing, and they do not go to the shotgun. Nope. In this situation, Moat usually stays in and blocks. He tries to help out, and now Rutledge is unsure and calls a timeout. Nine and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. The score remains the Giants 12, the Redskins 7. Third and seven for the Giants. Ooh, hot. Hot, so hot. Wendy's baked potatoes are hot. Wendy's stuffs them all kinds of ways. Hot. Like with cheese. Ooh, what a cheese. Chili and cheese. Bacon and cheese. Broccoli and cheese. Wendy's. Sour cream and chives. That makes five. Wendy's stuff. Baked potatoes. They're hot. The Wendy's kind of people. Ooh. There's more flavor to it than other beers. Third quarter, nine and a half minutes remaining to play. Giants leading 12 to 7. What a perfect day to play today. And the Giants came to just do that. They lead 12 7. Temperature is about 40, 40 degrees. Rutley. Eddings is inside the Redskin 20. 13 yards and a giant first down. Greg Williams and Daryl Green, the defenders. Watch, here's Eddings on the side of two receivers. See, he's, he's the inside guy. He's just coming across underneath. He only need, needed about five yards for a first down. Gets enough for the first down. Good throw again by Rutledge. Joe Gibbs looking on. What's frustrating Joe Gibbs now is the fact that the Giants have had the ball so long and you right. hate to have your offense stand on the sideline this long. They give to Morris, and Morris barrels down inside the Redskin 10. Morris cuts back over the left side for 11 yards, and they'll move those sticks again. Darrell Green tripped him up. Morris very nearly scored. Here's what we're talking about now. We see Malcolm Scott bringing the play in. Let's watch this last play. Last play. It's just over here to the left. You see they start to man block. The Redskins start working down the line of scrimmage. Daryl Grant, the right tackle, worked out too far. He couldn't get back in. Like he tried to throw his left foot in. Tried to trip him. 14th play of this drive by the Giants. That's gray in motion. Rutledge rolls right. Tomorrow's touchdown Giants. touchdown 10 quarters they finally got into the end zone Joe Gibbs legitimate worry it's the Giants 18 the Redskins 7 and Ali Haji Sheikin with Scott Bruner holding to try to make it 19-7 K Stadium crowd. Very quiet at the moment. The Sheik is good. 76 yards. They kept it 14 plays. More importantly, they kept it 6 minutes and 58 seconds. I think this is what you have to do. Let's watch this again. Now, here's Rutledge. He's going to roll out to the side. He's looking for something in here. Joe Washington right here. I mean, uh, uh, Joe Morris sneaks through and gets in the end zone here. Rutledge finds him and throws back. Now watch this. He's going to come out here, roll out. He's going to stretch his defense. He's going to come out here in the roll. Come on out here. Get him all good. Now see, see Morris back there? He just sneaked through, and then boom, he finds him back there and hits him on the inside. Pat Summerall, John Madden, RFK Stadium, Washington. It is the Giants 19, the Redskins 7. Eight minutes left to play in the third quarter. Reggie Evans is number 26 back deep for the Redskins, and Ali Haji Sheik is ready to kick off. Evans 
will handle it at the seven. Evans with some room springs out of the pack. Gets out to the 35-yard line. A good return by Reggie Evans. 28 yards. John Tuggle stopped him. Redskins have had poor field position except for their one touchdown most of the day. I think that's been a big thing. I think the giant defense has been playing outstanding. But the Redskins really haven't had very good field position. And you take the two of those things, and man, that'll do this to you. Look where the Redskins have started today. This point right here is the best. There's Riggins. Riggins wrapped up by Lawrence Taylor after a yard. Leonard Marshall also a good play. This is the way that Bill Parcells says he have to play Riggins. Force him outside. Don't let him cut inside. Now watch here. Watch. See, if they can take Taylor and Walker and force him to the outside, they can force him right into Taylor. He's not going to get around Taylor. They don't want him to get that inside cutback. They want him to go east and west until they can get to their outside linebacker. Riggins is out now. Jaquinto is the running back. Swap sides as they do on almost every play. That's Brown in motion. Theisman back to throw. Theisman does throw. Complete. And there's the flag down. Penalty markers thrown back in the backfield. Rick Walker was the intended receiver incomplete. Holding against Washington. Terry Jackson was the giant defender. Looks like it's going to be against Mark May, the right guard of the Redskins. It happened right in front of the referee. And Mark May was the guy in front there blocking. He has his hands on his hips. You know, that's a look like, you know, don't say my name, please, in front of these people. That's the only time I ever get mentioned. The only time they ever get mentioned is when they hold. They never say good block, 73. Well, Mark May has one thing going for him. The microphone doesn't work. We probably shouldn't say anything. Probably right. Second and 19 now. The ball at the 26. See? Our information is that it was not made. I'm not going to tell you who it was, though. Heisman back to throw. Has some time and does throw. That is Art Monk. About two yards shy of the first down. Kelly and Harry Carson, the two linebackers back there close by, 17 yards on the pickup. Let's watch Art Monk out here. You see, he's going to run up, and he's going to run a hook pattern where he just stops, just finds an open area inside that linebacker. You see, just inside between Carson and Kelly. That's the seam in the zone. The seam in the zone is the area between two linebackers. So Monk started in and worked right in between those two guys. So it's third down, about a yard and a half or two, maybe. Riggins and Wansley, the two running backs, and Wansley goes in motion. This time they give to Riggins. Riggins will have the first down, and he's off to the races. Chased by Jackson. Brought down finally by Terry Jackson. He's inside the giant 15. That looks like Super Bowl of last year. 44 yards for number 44. They wanted to keep him inside, but they got him inside, and Riggins bounced that one to the outside. Let's watch it right here. Motion will take Wansley out. Riggins starts right here, holds the defense in, and then bounces out and up the sideline before Jackson can get there. Now watch this. You see, there goes Wansley in deep in that motion. Here comes Riggins. He starts, holds in there. Gets by up to the outside. He's one on one on Jackson. We come back again to Riggins. And this time he lunges to about the 10 and pick up a three or four all on his own. Terry Kennard. That was, by the way, the longest run of the year for Riggins. 44 yards. I wonder if Joe, if, if John Riggins told Joe Gibbs, give me the ball. Remember last year he said that they got ready for the playoffs and he says, just give me the ball. As Joe Gibbs yesterday, if he said that, he said, you know, he said, that's kind of bothering me. He said, he hasn't said that this year. Kind of worries me. Maybe he said it at halftime. Maybe. Clock running, 445 left third quarter. They go with three tight ends. They give again to Riggin. Riggin to the five. Brian Kelly finally tripped him up. 
He is very close to the five, short of a first down. I tell you, you know, the Redskins are running right a lot today, and the reason is, I think, is, is Russ Grimm is not playing left guard. They have in there Ken Huff, who made a heck of a block on that play, pulling, but he's playing left guard now, number 61. He pulled it, and maybe that's why they're running more to the right, huh? Of course, all those guys are big, and all of them are good. It's still Wansley and Riggins, third and a yard at the five. Didier was in motion. They give to Riggins. He got the first down, I believe. Depending upon where they mark it, it's going to be close. Jerome Sally was on the bottom of the pile for the Giants. I'll tell you, Joe Gibbs doesn't want a fourth down call again here today. It's going to be close. He has practice on it, though. Yes. <laughs> He went for it last week, and I thought he should have, too. I thought that was a good call. Even though he didn't make it, I'd never second guess it. But he's not going to have to decide got it. this one. He got it. That measurement stopped the clock with 3.47 left to play in the third quarter. It's first and goal, Redskins, just outside the three. And there's the guy that's going to get the ball right there. Three, maybe four times. However, how many it takes. Well, he'll get it at least the first two. No more trick or treat for me down here. That was a quote from Joe Gibbs. Never play pass on first down, he said. They get to Rick. He lunges. Harry Carson on the bottom of the pile. Riggins got maybe a yard. Do you hear all that grunting and groaning yeah. going on, whistles yeah. blowing? This is great. I mean, this is, you know, the, in December, fighting for a division champion, guys on grass. You know, <laughs> they get down there. Do you hear all that noise? Yeah, you do it well. And we used to have a saying that you play the rest of it for show and you play goal line for dough. Second down at the three. Riggins only got about a half yard. Let's see if they go right again. In the pattern that looks like the formation yellow 31 they fake to the right Heisman will score up with a good block again the big run by Riggins set it all up is no longer in silence. Mark Mosley with Theisman staying on to hold will try to make it 1914. Mosley hits. They really hit it. The rollout by Theisman suckered Lawrence Taylor. Well, of course, it's it's John Riggins, though, because you know that he's going to get the ball. So he goes in, and now here comes Ken Huff. He pulls out there. He gets Lawrence Taylor just enough so that Theismann can get out around him and in the end zone. John Riggins with a little oxygen after that 44-yard sprint. Jeff Hayes will kick off. Joe Morris back deep for the Giants. Hayes underneath it a little bit. Morris at the 11. Morris picked up by his own man, Byron Hunt. Gets out to the 25. Let's go back and look at that long run by Riggins one more time. Well, that was the play. <clears throat> now, the guy that makes the block out here, we see the motion. Just starts the play here. And we see the motion. There goes Wansley. Now, he's going to go out there in motion. And then we get a, a good block right up here. In fact, it's by Wansley. Stop it right there. Here's the block that frees Riggins to the outside. See, Wansley started in motion, came out and made that block. Joe Morris, the lone setback as Rutledge goes back to throw again. Batted away. Darrell Grant, I believe, is the one who tipped it and knocked it down. There's the Washington bench, and Joe Gibbs, the head coach, in the huddle with the offense. He's talking to those offensive players. He's talking, okay, we have something going now. We got a little momentum. 
Here's what we have to do the next time we get the ball. Moat comes with the play for Rutledge. Malcolm Scott heads for the sideline. Again, the Giants operating with three wide receivers. Floyd Eddings in motion. Back goes Rutledge. Out to the right. He has Gray. Eight yards and out of bounds. Ken Coffey knocked Gray out of bounds. 2.24 left third quarter. I can see one of the secrets against the Redskin defense is to have a moving quarterback. Rutledge's success has been in those type of things. When you know they're going to pass, like he got the touchdown down there in the goal line off a roll. Here he got a play. Don't just stand back there and let those big tackles rush you. Move. Get to the outside. Jeff Rutledge came into this game pretty battered. He missed a few games in the middle of the year with a bad knee. But now Parcells is getting that good look. Here's the blitz. And a blitz by Greg Williams cuts down Joe Morris on third down. And the Giants' Dave Jennings will have to punt. That was a perfect call for that situation. And it's the first time in the last five possessions that they've stopped. And look at that. But they had a safety blitz on Greg Williams, and he blitzed right into the hole that Joe Morris was running. Nick. Giaquinto is back deep for the Redskins. Dave Jennings hangs a high kick. Giaquinto retreats, feels it, juggled it. Is hit immediately by Terry Kennard. 40-yard punt. Giaquinto lost a yard on the return, so it's a 41-yard net. 19 Washington 14 don't forget those three college bowl games coming up right here on CBS that you won't want to miss SMU and Alabama and the Sun the Peach Bowl North Carolina and Florida State and of course January the second as usual undefeated and second ranked Texas takes on once beaten Georgia in the Cotton Bowl Art Monk was the man in motion they take that counter play again wide open is Don Warren, the tight end who came across. Play works in somebody, some fashion, every time almost. I'll tell you, that thing really holds holds the effect. I mean, really holds the defense. Now watch, it's the same type of thing. Feisman is going to come out here. He's going to have the guard pull. These guys pull this way. He gets out here all by himself. Now watch it. Then they bring the tight end across in here. Catch it right there. Watch this. You see the the guards cross, the tackle pulls, there he goes. Now the tight end's coming across, and he hits him wide open. That is a tough play to defend. It really is. I don't know who discovered it. Discover a first down right here, an effort by Riggins that gets nothing. Brian Kelly out there quickly to bring down Big John. Well, you know what happens, you know, in a three-man line, you have your two inside linebackers over the guards. So you're keying the guards in the back. So you see the guard go one way, so you start that way. The other linebacker sees the other guard go the other way, so he starts that way. Riggins is faking. He's in the middle. And then you get all that boom boom in the middle there. And then the next thing you know, there's thighs and he's outside. It's like he appears from nowhere almost with all that movement going on. Second and nine from the 45. He's been back to throw. Good protection. Heisman throws complete to Charlie Brown inside the Giant 40 to the 38. Mark Haynes on the tackle with a 16-yard completion. Well, Charlie Brown and uh, Mark Haynes are having a little talk out there. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. Here's Charlie Brown, the outside guy. He's playing our Mark Haynes. He's just running it in. Haynes is off, probably in his zone. Charlie Brown catches a ball. Haynes comes in and tackles him. Now there must be a little extra stuff going on in there. The double slam. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants 19. The Redskins out. Bill Courier was the nearest defender. That was that same play again, Pat, where the guards pull, guards pull, boom, bootleg, the whole doggone thing. I'll tell you, that thing is wide open all the time. You know, he had Don Warren to play before that. Don Warren this time, he's hitting Monk off that play. That's a heck of an action. It hides him. You don't know where he's going to pop up. 
the thing is, as Theismann said about that, he said, you know, there's so many guys in there. He said, the one thing I'm thinking is getting the heck out of the way because you got your fullback and two guards crossing. He said, I don't want to get caught in the middle of that stuff. And a tackle right behind one of the guards. Here's the, here's the blitz, and Theismann gets rid of it. Incomplete. Brown almost found a handle as he had to leap with Terry Jackson making a good defensive play. I'll tell you, Terry Kennard timed that thing perfectly. We'll see Jackson, he's out there, but here comes Kennard right there. You see, he stayed back, stayed back, hit that thing. Here comes Jackson now. Had Jackson not gotten there, he couldn't have made that play. Now watch Kennard. See, he hits it, he holds it wait enough, makes the center and guard make their block, then crack, he hit that hole. Now it's third and 10 from the 39. Nick Giaquinto in the backfield with Theismann. Theismann's retreat. George Martin around his feet. They're going to be called for holding, but it's picked off by Lawrence Taylor. Theismann's fourth interception of the day. Clint Didier was the intended receiver. Joe Theismann is looking back and saying, who intercepted that, Taylor? He's been rushing me. He's been making the tackles on the runs, and now he's 20 yards back. That holding was on George Stark, the right tackle, but that won't even count. Because, of course, the Giants will take the play. So we can see, see Theismann here. See, now Stark is back there. You see him hold right there, George Martin. They call them for that. And, of course, Martin being there, and Taylor, Taylor is back there, 20. The Giants, 19. The Redskins, 14, with 14.42 left to play. I would think interest would be very high in Dallas, Texas. Maybe even more than that. To Morris. Morris shoots back to the inside, gets out to about the 24. Ken Coffey and Greg Williams. Maybe the 25 Morris got to. He's running well. Because we know if the Redskins lose and the Cowboys win, that the Cowboys win all the tiebreakers. So instead of all the playoff games, the championship game, if they go that far, instead of it being here in Washington, it would be down in Dallas. Of course, Dallas still has to defeat the 49ers. Redskins nice. can lose a lot here today. They sure can. Wolfhook is back as a running back, by the way. That's Eddings in motion. Fumble. And the Redskins have it. Darrell Grant will be the last to get up. The Redskins get a break. A turnover. At the Giant 23, they just messed up the snap from center. Just watch the snap here. It doesn't look like it ever got up there. It looked like it was a low snap. Never got there. Hughes tried to get around and get it. He couldn't. Daryl Grant gets in there and gets the ball, number 77. Looked like the ball slipped and used hand before he ever got it up. Right, it never got up to Rutledge's hands. First down, Redskins. The giant 23. And Theismann gives it into Riggin. He cuts back inside to the 20. Shut him down after a gain of about three. Mark Haynes and Terry Kennard stopped him. I'll tell you, you know, the turnover is one thing, but the other statistics that's important is once you get the turnover, what you do with it, taking advantage of the turnover. Riggins got about two yards, so make it second and eight from the 21. As you look at the day that Jeff Rutledge has had, 236 yards on 17 out of 31. The one TD, the one interception. The Redskins with a second down from the Giant 21. Heisman back to throw. Looking. Pass almost intercepted by Terry Kennard. He was looking for Charlie Brown. And Kennard came from nowhere to almost pick it off. He's come a long way this year that Terry Kennard he was the Giants number one draft choice didn't start Beasley Reese was starting they finally let Beasley Reese go he went to Tampa Terry Kennard started and he's a tough guy you know and that was one of his problems he was good against the run but he would take all the play fakes and now he looks like he's playing the pass and everything well he's looks like he's becoming a complete free safety sure does third and eight Jaquinto in the backfield with Theismann. 
Casey Merrill from the backside with the Giants' fifth sack of the day. He beat Jacoby. Casey Merrill, whom they got from Green Bay. I'll tell you, that was quite a pass rush here by Merrill. He just kept coming. It's from Feisman's backside. It'll be from the right side of the screen. Feisman is looking to his right. He's looking now. He's looking in the middle. He doesn't see him. By the time he does, Casey Merrill has him by the leg. Well, that one could have hurt. Oh, yeah. From 46 yards out. Here is Mosley. He is good. And it's 1917. The Redskins creep closer. We have a lot of time left. 12 minutes, 42 seconds. The Giants 19, Washington 17. 12.42 left as Jeff Hayes prepares to kick off. Joe Morris is number 20 back deep for the Giants. He's done a good job today. Here's Hayes. Drives it deep. It's Larry Heater instead of Morris. Heater up the middle. Heater to the 32. Peter Cronin made the stop, a 22-yard return. Heater. The NFC West, as you probably know, is still very much unsettled. 49ers don't play till Monday night, but the Rams and New Orleans battle in New Orleans. Tomorrow, that's the lineup. Rams in New Orleans, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Green Bay at Chicago. The Packers still mathematically alive. And Detroit controlling their own destiny in their battle against Tampa Bay. They'll know what happened because they play late. So one last big Sunday coming up here on CBS. Here's Rutledge on first down. Byron Williams to midfield in Red's, Redskin territory. Knocked down by Greg Williams. Giant first down, some breathing room. I'll tell you, this just Jeff Rutledge has all the confidence in the world and the poise. Now watch him, and he's getting good pass protection from his offensive line. Watch him. He has the time here. Good protection. See, solid. Finds Williams. Whack, just hits him right in there. Williams headed for his third straight 100-yard day. He's caught six for 93 yards. Morris alone setback, and he gets the handoff. Gets to the outside. Morris bangs and sails down inside the Redskin 40. Very close to a first down. Ken Coffey put him airborne. Parcells. He's saying, go, Joe, go outside. Get a first down. Hey, <laughs> great. One of the things that Bill was saying last night that he wants to see Jeff Rutledge. He said this year they didn't go into training camp knowing who was going to be their quarterback. They had nothing said. Is it going to be Scott Bruner, Phil Sims, Jeff Rutledge? And that's been a problem for them all year. And he said he wants to have that settled before next year. And maybe Jeff Rutledge is settling it right here today. He might have just won himself a job. That was a first down by Morris, and those are the numbers on Rutledge today. He threw 52 times last week against Seattle. One shy of a club record, which was set back in 1948 by Charlie Connolly. From the 38, this is Eddings in motion. Again. Rutledge back to take comes the Redskins on a blitz. Scott comes up with a reception, and what an effort by Rutledge. I don't know how he threw that one. It looked like a hook shot in basketball. He had three Redskins on him. Watch this. He said, well, I'm glad I got rid of that one. Most of the time, you'd want your quarterback to take the sack here. Look, there's one, two, three, and right, just right out of the side. He slingshot him. it. That was Todd Liebenstein, who was wrapped around him, and Rutledge has not been sacked yet. He won't ever come much closer than that. On second down, he gives to Morris. Morris bangs inside the Redskin 25. Monty Coleman finally tripped him up. Here's another guy that's having a big day today is Joe Morris. Look at that. He has 53 yards already. Who would have thought that last week against this Redskin defense? Tony Dorsett couldn't run. And now we see Joe Morris. But watch, watch J.T. Turner there on butts there. 
68. That's a heck of a block. You see why? Because he got him straightened up. Then you can take him back. Joe Morris is only 5'7". He'll get another chance. He gets to the outside almost. Still on his feet is Morris. Down the sideline, Joe Morris to the 10. Darrell Green knocked him out of bounds, but Morris gets it inside the 10. It's first and goal from there. Morris might be hurt. This is amazing here, Pat. We're talking about the number one defense in the National Football League against the run, and the Giants are running against him. And they're running against him with Joe Morris. He broke three tackles on the way to this first down. Watch this. Now, the thing you have to have, again, is penetration. They, they get the inside off there. But look, there's one, two guys right there. They just miss tackles. And Joe Morris gets up the sideline, picks up the first down. I didn't see anything that would have hurt him. But he... Five teams will battle for the right to represent the NFC in Tampa. Next Monday, the playoff excitement begins with the NFC Wild Card Game on the home of the Super Bowl, CBS Sports. There's Morris, who seems to be okay. Wolfhook has taken his place, so both the giant runners are hurting. It's first and goal from the eight. 25 left to play. Rutledge backs up, throws outside. In it for Ernest Gray, incomplete. Anthony Washington, the defender, that's one of the few poor passes, and that really wasn't that bad that Rutledge has thrown. Uh, he's still upset. He, he, he hit his, his helmet with both hands after he threw it, and then he kicked it the dirt because he knew it was a bad one. It just took off on him. I think in this position again, don't you, that that rollout is probably their most effective weapon. I would think so, and then have the possibility of either throwing to that side or throwing back as he did for the touchdown. Rutledge back. Goes quickly. Zeke Moa to the one. Almost broke Greg Williams' tackle, but didn't. And they put it back at about the two now. Of course, they can't get a first down, can they? No. Yeah, so they have to get a touchdown. So now it's third, and they have to get the touchdown. I think if they don't, I think they would have to kick the field goal here because yeah. they have the two-point lead, and I think they'd have to go uh, for the field goal to make the five-point lead. Here is Byron Williams coming back in in place of Missler. And with two yards to go, this has to be a passing down. This is a pass. This is long yardage when you're on the goal line to third down. They got to get going. 30 second clock down to five. And now Rutledge does get going. Here's the blitz, and down he goes. The ball is fumbled, and now they say it was down. They say the ball was dead. Mel Kaufman came on the blitz from the outside. Dexter Manley has the ball and doesn't want to give it back. But here comes Ali Haji Sheik. That's the first sack all day. I'll tell you, this is going to be an interesting one because if his arm is going forward, it's an incomplete forward pass. If it's not, it's a fumble. To me, that was a fumble. He started his arm to go forward, and he stopped it himself. He was bringing it back. He had, that was a fumble. I think that should be the Redskins' ball, but it's not. 28-yard attempt by Ali Haji Sheik. High snap. Luther gets it down. The Sheik is good again, and that makes it Giants 22. Redskin 17. I don't know. His arm went forward almost like a pump fake, and then the ball came out. That's right. I think, see, he starts on the roll here, and now he starts to throw. He has his arm up. Now he brings it back himself. You see, and he's bringing it back when he's hit. That was a fumble. That was a fumble. Should have been the Redskins' ball. Giants 22, 9 13 remaining. The Redskins 17. The Sheik, who's had a big day, will kick off. So has Jeff Rutledge, that guy. Reggie Evans back deep at the five. Evans cut down just outside the 20. Compare quarterbacks today. Zeisman today, 11 of 22, 102 yards. The one touchdown pass to Charlie Brown, but four interceptions. Rutledge, 20 out of 35, 268 yards, one touchdown and one interception. 
Redskins trail by five. Excuse me, Joe. Excuse me, Pat, but he's going to be remembered for what he does this last nine minutes right now. Right. 9.04 to be exact. Here's Theismann outside quickly to Brown. Taylor out there with Jackson, and they knock him out of bounds after about a seven-yard pickup. Eight yards, call it. Joe Theismann has to go to work here because that field goal really hurt. Uh, uh, before they kicked that, of course, the Redskins could have could have won the game with a field goal, but now they need a touchdown. Second and two. Clint Didier lines up as the flanker to the right and now goes in motion. They get to Riggins. Riggins with that. Backward lunge comes very close to picking up a Redskin first down. Brian Kelly stopped him. And here's really? that play. Oh, excuse me. Now, what they're saying is that Rutledge was in the grasp of the defense before the fumble, and they blew the whistle. I don't know. I don't believe that. I mean, I, I, mean, I believe that they say that, but I, to me, it's a fumble. He faked. He got hit, and the ball bounced out. That's a fumble. You can say in the grasp and say anything you want. That's a tough call that in the grasp business. We've seen a lot of controversy about that. One. But not when the grasp causes you to fumble. Right. Eight and a half minutes left to play now. Fake to Riggins. Here's the play again. And there's the penalty marker down again as Heisman takes over and scoots out of bounds. Chased by Courier. But the penalty flag went down quickly. Illegal motion against the Redskins. Somebody on the right side moved early. Going to have to design a new defense to stop that play. I'll tell you, the Giants still haven't done it. I mean, that, that's a one thing that they, they can't figure out. But it, what it does is with the guards pulling the opposite ways, it throws off all your keys. The ironic thing is that they run it themselves. Yeah. They said, that's so good, let's us do it. Giaquinto goes in. It'll be first and 15. The Redskins operating from their own 27. I think they called illegal motion on 74. Start. Well, he was the guy that was pulling to his left. Maybe he started a little early. It'll be first and 15. The Redskins operating from their own 27, trailing by five points. Playing for a lot of reasons. Trying to win for a lot of reasons. Straight back this time. Giants on a blitz. Grant Van Pelt chasing, and I'm missing Theismann. Theismann pointing deep, throwing the Art Monk back there. No good. Terry Kennard back there in the battle with Monk. Van Pelt had a sack. And Theismann, with his great athletic ability, got away from him. And now he knows that he's down by. You know, you know he needs a touchdown here, so he's not thinking of running here. He's looking, looking. Good coverage by the Giants. Here comes Van Pelt. He, Feisman gives him the old turn, gets out there. He's pointing. Go deep, Monk. Go deep. Go deep. I'll throw it to you like he used to do in the lot. Remember that? Boom. He throws it. Kennard's over there. Remember how he used to do that? Oh, yeah. You go out to keep going. Keep going. I'll throw it as far as I can. Not quite a big enough lot. For a street corner. You, know, you, <laughs> yeah. you go up there to the first light, turn left, and stop it. back to the car. Hook at the manhole cover. Second and 15. Here's Seisman back again. Van Pelt on the blitz again. Seisman gets loose. Gets it to Charlie Brown, who tiptoes about a yard shy of a first down. Terry Jackson, the defender. Lawrence Taylor was out there. Remember the last time? Watch Lawrence Taylor here, 56. He's coming out underneath. The last time he was out there and intercepted the ball on that sideline. This time we see Charlie Brown just worked a little hook and slide to the outside. There's Lawrence Taylor, a little late on that one. He didn't get the depth. That'll make it third and short. Looks like about a foot where Charlie Brown tiptoed out of bounds. Wansley and Riggins, the two setbacks. Wansley goes in motion again. And they hand off to Riggins. Riggins does the same thing again. Gets to the outside, Terry Kennard. Herds him out of bounds, but Riggins bounces to the outside, still has good speed. 
But he still does, and the, and the Giants aren't going to give him that inside on short yardage. They're plugging up everything in the inside. They want to keep him running east and west. And, of course, he's done it the last two times, and he's done it pretty well. He bounced outside and got the first down. He gets east and west, and all of a sudden, it's north and south. 21 carries, 92 yards for Riggins. I was looking at Riggins yesterday without pads on. He has some, some muscle. I mean, he is really a muscular guy. I'll say, as I had a little visit with him Thursday night, and he fills up the booth. Nice man outside to Brown. Brown shakes one tackle and now goes out of bounds with Parson looking at him. He missed. He made Lawrence Taylor miss. Eight-yard pickup, and the Redskins move closer. Stop the clock as well. 7.50 left to play. See if we can watch Joe Gibbs call a play. Joe Gibbs calls all the plays. He gives them to the two coaches on either side of him, and they signal the plays into Theismann. One of the coaches is live. The other one isn't. Look, he's still giving si there's signals. Just tell more. This, that. Son of a gun. we got to get him in. Well, they're both live. But one of them gives dummy signals. Yeah, right. We were watching them practice that yesterday at practice. They do it in every practice. Here's Riggins again. Riggins has the first down. Just raw power. The diesel is still working. Touchdown. They can't settle for field goal, or I guess they could, depending upon how much time remains. Twelve years of running back. That in itself is remarkable. The oldest in the league, and that to me is even more remarkable than all of his statistics. Rigo's Rangers, those dressed in Army fatigues last week when they went to Dallas. Didier was in motion. Giants faking, showing blitz. Could be. Art Monk, the Redskins, picked it up. Bill Currier finally ran him down. It'll be first and goal at the seven. You know, that's what happens when you blitz. If you don't get there, that means someone has to cover the guys man-to-man -man all over the field. The Redskins pick it up. Watch Kennard here, 43 is a blitz. Center comes off, Grimm picks it up, takes one, comes back, gets another one. Now, downfield here, we have man-to-man, -man, and of course, Art Monk beats his man man-to-man, -man, Bill Furrier in that case. Watch him, you see, he just runs right by him. It's a mismatch of speed. It's a wide receiver on a strong safety. Tell you what, Riggins made a great pickup, too, on that last blitz by the Giants. So did Grimm at center, he blocked, too. Both did. Riggins, touchdown. Went Didier. A big one that is. Mark Haynes, the defender. He sees Kennard there. He says, I have to get over there. 
Rutschum snap it. Boom, he gets him with his left shoulder. Said, oh, there's another one. Bounces back to his right shoulder. Picks off two. That gave Feisman the time to get rid of the ball. Dark month. That may be the biggest drive that the Redskins had all year. And now the Giants have a big one facing them, operating from their own 30-yard line. They need to get the Sheik in range. 5.53 left to play. Morris went out. Wolfhook took his place. Jeff Rutledge, the quarterback. That's Moat in motion. He stays in the block. Rutledge throws. Intended for Byron Williams, incomplete. Vernon Dean, the defender. Redskins 24, Giants 22. Byron Williams has had a big day. The Redskins have come back now with their five defensive backs on first down because they know the Giants are going to be throwing. Although the Giants now only down two points, they don't have to think in terms of a touchdown. They just have to think in terms of a field goal. Eddings and Williams come wide left. Gray is up at the top of your picture. Now Eddings goes in motion. Rutledge comes back. Redskins stunt again. Gray. Penalty marker down. Not sure what exactly happened, but Gray had the ball knocked loose. Anthony Washington was the defender. Redskins are clapping. It's against the Giants. Let's see if they take the penalty. I don't think they would. Illegal motion. Now they'll probably turn it down and make it third down. That's exactly what they decided. with this contest until it's over. The Cardinals against the Wolfpack. Always outstanding teams. 5-29 left to play at RFK Stadium. First and 10 Redskins, their own 25. Washington up by two. Riggins the lone setback. He'll get a workout now. Riggins looking for something and finding not much. Maybe a yard and a half is Harry Carson. And some more in blue met Riggins right at the pass. It would be something if they had a, a collision measuring machine to measure when John Riggins runs in there and he's met head to head by Harry Carson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like a scale, you know, go boom and they just measure it. I bet it would score like 83. That would uh, vibrate a few things. Second down. Riggins got three. It's Didier, the motion man. Here's Riggins again. He got maybe another two. It'll be third down now for the Redskins, and you'd almost have to bet we'll see that Theismann roll out with the confusion play. Riggins just went over 100 yards. Except I think that the Redskins are going with, uh, with three wide receivers now. Looks like it. 
Riggins comes out. Giaquinto's in, so it won't be that play. Well, they have Mark McGrath in there now, who they just activated this week because they took their punt returner, Mike Nellens, off, put him on injured reserve. He won't be eligible to come back until the Super Bowl if the Redskins get there. So it's third and five from the 30. Heisman back to throw. And down he goes. Heisman sacked by a hard rush from Jerome Sally and George Martin. Six times he's been down. I'll tell you, Sally, Sally took a quick inside move here. Watch him. He's he's over Huff there. Now watch, he just takes that inside move. See, so he puts a left hand up on his shoulder, brings a right hand over, and he just hit that gap right between the center and the guard. It was a heck of a move he made on Ken Huff. Huff was thinking he was going to take him square, and he took his inside quickly. Sally plays better and better every week. Hayes gets off a good kick. Pete Shaw retreats to the Giants back to his own 30. They got something set up here. There's the flag, though. The ever-present flag on a punt return or a kickoff return. Yep. Walking above the waist from behind. And, uh, that's that's a special this year. Well, in fact, that's been a special for two years. Yeah. Never fails, it seems. 45-yard punt by Hayes. Clipping against the Giants. Al Steinfeld, number 63, is the guilty party. That's it. We're going to see it right there in the left of the screen. Right there in front of us right now. Right in the back, he got him. It was against Reggie Evans. Now look, now he's making an excuse. He's saying over there, no, I had my shoulder. I had my head in front. Yeah. So it's first down, Giants, and they'll start from their own 30-yard line. They have time. 325 left to play. Jeff Rutledge, the quarterback. Morris in the backfield. Long count. Here come the Redskins, and the ball is loose this time. And the Redskins have it. This is a fumble. And that ought to do it. Monty Coleman came on a blitz. And Dave Butts made the recovery. He may not give that ball away. He's not going to give it. He better not sit on it, but he's not going to give it to anyone else. Look at that thing. He may squeeze that thing so hard he'll pop it, but he's not going to give it back to those officials. Now, both tackles are right there in the gap. You see, and they start inside, then come back outside. Here comes Monty Coleman. Now, right there, he just put his helmet right on Jeff Rutledge's chest. He got his chest, his shoulder pad got the ball, knocked it out, and that was a fumble. And so the Redskins take over with a chance to solve it away. 3.20 left to play, first and 10 at the Giant 21. Here's Riggins. And there goes Riggins. 12. D. Hardison tripped him up. You ever notice how fullbacks get better as the game goes on? Because everyone else just wears down a little, gets a little more tired, a little slower, and then they can start this way. See, he starts out here to the left, nothing out there. Cut it right back here. There's a good hole, got a good block back there. Zipped it right up there and picked up eight yards. So that'll make it second and two. 25 carries. 109 yards for Riggins, the third time he's been over 100 this year. He goes again. Down to about the 10 and very near. A Ritzkin first down, Lawrence Taylor on the stop. I'll tell you, see the guy in the yellow cap right there? That's Joe Bugle. He's the offensive line coach. He's the head hog. And I'll tell you, he's done he's done a great job with these offensive linemen. He really has. With in this fact, team. this whole coaching staff has done an outstanding job. I think in the last couple of years, maybe they've done the best coaching job. But I'll tell you another guy that has a lot to do with that is the general manager, Bobby Bethel. Oh, I'm sure. They've stopped the clock because they're measuring to see if Riggins did get the first down. And he almost did. Third and very short. Riggins now stands in the number three position 
in the NFL this year. Of course, Kurt Warner and Dorsett, and Peyton and Andrews and Dickerson all play tomorrow. So they may, may not hold up throughout the end of the regular season. Wonsley is in front of them. That's still a pretty good group, though, isn't it? It is. Here's Wiggins. He has the first down. Just barrels over Terry Kennard. Harry Carson was also wrapped around Wiggins' leg. But he knocked Terry Kennard backward about two yards. So it'll be first and goal from the eight for the Redskins. They're leading 24-22. Just over two minutes. There's the guys that are making it work. Now, Jeff Bostic, of course, he isn't playing today. Russ Grimm is playing center. Big Joe Jacoby over there, left tackle. He's in the Pro Bowl. Right side, Mark May, George Stark, the veteran. And they let a couple of these other guys yep. in the Hawks, huh? Riggins and Warren and Walker, the two tight ends. And, of course, they have a huge following here in Washington. How to get one of those things. <laughs> You know, Riggins doesn't even watch the film with the with the backs and ends. He watches it with a hawk. They just slop around there and watch that film do that. Two stuff. minutes left to play. Pat Summerall, John Madden at RFK Stadium in Washington. Ball is just outside the seven. They give again to Riggins. He cuts inside the five. Riggins. Picked up a couple, Brian Kelly and Harry Carson combined to make the stop. Timeout for the Giants. Second and four from the four. A minute 53 left to play now. Check the situation in the NFC Central again now. Controls their own destiny, really. The Lions beat Tampa Bay. They're in the playoffs. But Green Bay still has a mathematical chance. Chicago, Minnesota, and Tampa Bay, of course, out of it now. And tomorrow, the issue will be settled. It will begin with the NFL today. Green Bay is Chicago. The Rams, New Orleans, another big game. Philadelphia, St. Louis. And then, as I said, the Lions control their own destiny. They play in a late game in Detroit against Tampa Bay. If they win, they're in. And if Joe Gibbs, Washington Redskins, win today, they get a week off, and they'll be the host team as long as they keep winning. And Joe Gibbs is really looking forward to that. He told us yesterday, he says, I have to get a haircut. Said, I've been going here every day. He sleeps in his office three nights a week. He said he hasn't even had a chance to get a haircut. He said, if we win it, one thing I'll do next week is get a haircut. Second down and goal. Ball on the four-yard line. Riggins the lone setback. He hasn't scored a touchdown rushing today yet. And he won't do it on that attempt either. Lawrence Taylor led the giant defense. And it'll be third and goal from about the two and a half, it looks like. Hey, one thing you have to say about this defense, this giant defense, they have played hard all day. Here they are at the end, and they're still playing tough down there in this goal line. Your friend Bobby Bethard, who has put this Redskin team together, has just joined us in the press box. Well, I was just talking about Bobby Bethard and the job that he's done putting this team together. You know, it's a uh, it's a funny thing that. Uh, you know, when Bobby came here, they really didn't they they really didn't have a lot of draft choices, and he's done this without draft choices. Uh, Bobby, Bobby, congratulations. Thanks, John. It was uh, I think maybe it's probably one of the best things that happened is having a game like this. Well, you know, we're talking about how you did this without having any any draft choices, having 26 free agents. It's just amazing. Well, there was really no other way to do it because we didn't have the draft choice, but we have a great coaching staff, and, uh, you know, uh, I think it proved today that we are a good team because we were able to come back. 
Well, I think it's a real it's a real team thing with with the job that you've done at getting the players and the job that Joe Gibbs and his coaching staff do. So it's third and goal from the two. Big play coming right here. They get again to Riggins. Riggins gets in. Although I haven't seen an indication from an official yet. Now I have. It's a touchdown. Riggins just powered straight ahead. His 24th touchdown of the year. That breaks the all-time NFL record, and he did it all rushing. 30 carries, 122 yards, the one touchdown, the season's best. For Big John Riggins. Watch this action down here. All those bodies in there. Now a good fullback moves the pile backwards. <laughs> Did you see that? The first thing was hit about the two-yard line. Riggins took that whole pile and put it right back into the end zone. Injured player down for the Giants. While they attend to him, we can't see who it is. Let's look at the touchdown again. But just average football players, average fullbacks, get stopped before they get hit. The great ones keep going after they're hit, and they make piles move this way. And Riggins just did that. John is listed at 235 pounds, but he looks bigger than that. And he's still fast. Here's what I was talking about just a minute ago. The all-time single-season touchdown leader, 1983 John Riggins at the Washington Redskins. Harry Carson, who met Riggins in the hole, now he's taken a long walk to the sideline. Mark Mosley will try for the extra point. With Heisman holding. Don't forget coming up next, NCAA basketball. Mosley is right down the middle. Back in 1937, the Redskins band was formed. And in 1937, the first time they played this song, Hail to the Redskins. Two yards for John Riggins, but that was 122 tough yards right. for him. 
44 at one track. You'll have some welts on that body. Oh, yeah. Rutledge to Byron Williams. Joe Theismann really wound up on the sideline. They have no timeouts remaining, the Giants, so they'll have to go in a hurry. A minute sure. 20 left to play. Joe Theismann stays wound up. <laughs> He'd be great in one of those fast-talking commercials. Ernest Gray couldn't hang on. That'll stop the clock with a minute 13 remaining. I'd like to introduce you to some of the people responsible for us being here. The executive producer, Terry O'Neill. Senior producer, Charles H. Milton. Still the third. Sandy Grossman, the director. And, of course, acknowledge the rest of our group. They all travel well, don't they? And they all work well when the game starts, too. They really do. Great job. Rutledge to Tuggle. Tuggle tries to get his first down, and maybe he did, and got out of bounds, so he got everything accomplished. The rest of the people. looked like they were in a difficult situation but they rose to the occasion and it was a legitimate worry that Joe Gibbs had about this being a tough game Barcells all he can do is shake his head future and the gentleman that was supposed to take his place or had been rumored to take his place has vehemently denied it. That would be Howard Snellenberger, of course. I'll tell you this, Parcells thinks he's going to be back. Well, I'll tell you this. I think he deserves to be back. This has been a tough year. I mean, anything bad that can happen happened here. And I think if you're going to hire a coach, you have to give him a chance. This year, he really didn't have a chance. And I I, I mean, he's a good guy, and I, I hope that he is back. That was Ernest Gray on the reception from Rutledge. They get into Redskin territory. They stop the clock while they move the chains. 13-yard gain, Rutledge still firing. Across the middle, Byron Williams. Williams to the Redskin, 24. Rich Millot made the stop, 21-yard gain. Another big day for Byron Williams. The Giants hurry it up. You know, getting back to that coaching thing, you know, had the, had the Steelers gotten rid of Chuck Noll when he was 1-13 in the first year, I don't think they would have won four Super Bowls. Eddings has the ball go through his hands and clock stop with 12 seconds left to play. Forget coming up the Louisville Cardinals against the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Rutledge is 24 out of 45, 324 yards, one touchdown, one interception. So he's closed out his season with two pretty good days. We will be back here at RFK Stadium. This is not the last game of the year, it is the last game of the regular season. There'll be playoff games here. Butch Wolf with the intended receiver has it bounce off his jersey with seven seconds to go. Time for perhaps one more passing effort by Jeff Rutledge. You know, the other thing I think we can do is congratulate the Washington Redskins for, for an outstanding job. And Joe Gibbs, he can get a haircut now and all that yeah. stuff. But, you know, coming off a Super Bowl and then coming back and having this type of year is really something. Remember three years ago, the Raiders had a down year after they won it, and then the 49ers had a down year after they win it. These guys didn't have any kind of down year. Rutledge runs out of the pocket, will lay it toward the end zone to Tuttle, who is out of bounds, and it's incomplete. And this contest is over. The first NFC team in the history to win 14 games in the Redskins. 
Mets played them tough, but the Redskins were equal to the occasion, as they have been almost all year long. A record of 14 and 2. So for John Madden, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from RFK Stadium, where once again the final score is Washington 31, the New York Giants 22. NCAA basketball is next on CBS Sports as Denny Crum leads his Louisville Cardinals.